All right, so check this out. I went to the movies this weekend, and afterwards, I stopped by the ladies' room along with everybody else. When it was my turn, I was near the back of the line. Several stall doors opened simultaneously, and I had my pick. One lady, referring to the stall that she had just left, said, Don't go in that one, it's out of paper. So, I went into the one next to it. I had been near the end of the line for the bathroom, so the noise from people washing their hands and flushing had died down. I heard someone go into the stall next to me and close the door. I felt the door close the way one does in a bathroom with side-by-side -side stalls. Everything shakes for a moment and you can hear the latch close. I heard her sigh and shift around, but I didn't see her feet or anything. She was in the stall without paper and I was stuck between extreme shyness and knowing that due to the bathroom code, she would probably ask me for some toilet paper. Then I thought of a solution. I quickly flushed and stood up. I rolled the paper down from the dispenser until it was almost touching the floor so the person in the stall next to me could see it and grab it if they wanted to. Satisfied that I wouldn't have to talk to a stranger, but they would still have the paper if they needed, I left the stall to wash my hands. As I turned on the water, I glanced behind me in the mirror to see if she'd figured out to grab the toilet paper from my side of the stall, but I was shocked to see that her stall door was open and there was nobody there. There was nobody left in the bathroom at all. It was a weird feeling, sort of like the sound draining out of the room as I stared, unbelieving. Where did she go? She didn't have time to leave. Since there was no one else in the bathroom at this point, I would have heard her. The whole thing took place in about 20 seconds from the time she closed the door to the time that I left my stall. I never heard or saw her stall door open, didn't hear any feet leaving the bathroom, and didn't hear the main bathroom door open or close, and on top of everything, this happened while I was away on vacation. Being as shy as I am, I was hyper aware of my surroundings because I was trying to sense the culture of the locals and just fit in, so I was paying attention more than usual, if that makes sense. If I hadn't recently learned about this sub, I would probably have blown this off as just me being spacey or something, like I've blown off other situations in the past that I couldn't explain. I still can't explain this one, but at least I know I'm not the only one who experiences these kinds of things. First of all, sorry about my English if it's not perfect. English isn't my native language, but I'll try to make this understandable. This happened to me today, and after a couple of hours of trying to find a logical explanation for this, I came to a conclusion that I just can't. Later, I remembered reading these glitch stories from Reddit some time ago, so I thought I could make my first Reddit post and share this event with you. Here's some background information to make this a bit more clear. I'm a 20-year-old guy, still living with my family, that's my mom, my dad, my little sister, and our dog, which I'll call Molly. Molly is a Newfoundland dog that loves winter and spends most of the days, and sometimes even nights, in our backyard, sleeping and chilling in thick snow. Today, in the afternoon, I was home alone and Molly was sleeping in the snowy backyard, like always. Suddenly, I remembered that in the morning I promised my dad to pick up groceries before he comes home from work. It was already 4 p.m., about a half an hour before my dad usually comes home. I grabbed my keys and looked outside of our living room window to see Molly still peacefully sleeping on the snow. I thought about letting her sleep there since I would only be away for half an hour, but then decided to take her inside to get some food and water. I opened the door and called her to come in, only to see the most disappointed dog face ever. Newfies really love the freezing cold air. I finally managed to lure her in with some snacks and locked the door. I was about to leave and walked through the hallway to the front door. Molly followed me all the way, looking extremely sad to be left alone. I told her I would be back in a minute and slowly closed the door, still talking to Molly as the gap fully closed. 
The last sight of Molly's snowy paws stuck to my mind, and I remember being irritated thinking that I have to dry the whole house with the towel after all that snow has melted on the floor. I started walking towards the car and immediately saw my dad driving into our yard. I waited outside my car as he parked and got out of his car. He told me he had a bit of a shorter day at work and seemed to be frustrated at me for leaving at the last minute. I told him I just took Molly inside and she'll be waiting for him behind the door. She usually hears the car coming and goes to wait behind the door. I saw my dad opening the door as I was slowly driving away from our yard, expecting to see a happy Molly welcoming him. But Molly wasn't there, which was a bit weird to see, but I didn't think much of it. Dad stepped in and closed the door after giving me a seemingly surprised look from not meeting Molly right away. I left and thought to myself that Molly probably went to the kitchen to eat or drink water and just ran to my dad right after the door was closed. I was away for about a half an hour and when I got back inside, I saw my dad brushing Molly's fur in the living room. As I was putting groceries in the fridge, my dad asked me why I told him that Molly was inside. I quickly answered, saying that I took her inside right before I left, like I had said before. I didn't really understand what my dad was trying to ask me. He said that when he came in, he saw Molly barking behind the backyard door, wanting to be let in. We argued for quite some time, me telling him that I clearly remember Molly sitting behind the door with her snowy paws and sad face just a minute before he got in, and him telling me that she was barking behind the closed door in the backyard. I then asked about snow or water on the floor, and Dad said there was nothing on the floor, not even the smallest puddle. Some of you may know how badly wet snow can stick to the long fur of a dog that's been rolling in it. Considering the size of an adult Newfoundland dog, that amount of snow melted into water looks like it's been poured from a bucket. I have no idea what happened. I wasn't intoxicated or significantly tired, and there's no mental illness in our family. Also, my dad never lies, and even if he did, what would have been the point in that? Was this a glitch in the Matrix? I think this belongs here as one of several temporal anomalies I've experienced. In Christmas of 1992, I received a franked envelope with an old-style stamp on it through my door, addressed to me at my then address. On opening, I found it was a Christmas card wishing me a happy Christmas 1944, with a return address which was nearby from a married couple that I'd never heard of. I asked various friends of mine whether they had pranked me, but they all denied it. I suppose one of them might have been lying. However, even if it was a practical joke, I don't understand how the person concerned could have got the card franked and obtained an envelope, unfranked, wartime stamped the card from 1944. All of them looked new. The envelope was of a different texture of paper, but it wasn't old, just differently textured, suggesting a different kind of paper-making technology where the grain of the paper was more obvious and slightly coarser than I was used to in the 1990s. I can't find the card now, and I can't remember the names, but I can remember the location of the alleged address from which it was sent. This links somewhat to a couple of other musical temporal oddities. My recollection of Dire Straits' Walk of Life was that it appeared on every Dire Straits album as a kind of superstitious good luck charm from 1978 onward and was released as a single in the late 70s rather than 1985. Also, Tears for Fears, Sowing the Seeds of Love was released in 1982, not 1989, as a single. In both cases, when I first heard them on the radio, I was able to sing along verbatim and with the tune exactly right and thought the radio station was playing an oldie. In the case of Sowing the Seeds of Love, since it was inspired by the events of the 1987 general election, this makes very little sense. I realize it's a pastiche of psychedelia, but that's not it. I remembered it clearly as a 1982 single. 
My take on all of these events as they happened was this, and I've mentioned this elsewhere on this subreddit. Our consciousness is confined to this lifetime, and we can't admit non-existence as part of our being. So the events from before our conception and after our death do not exist for us. Instead, time appears to loop subjectively for us, and our experience of dying will be immediately followed by the beginning of consciousness in the womb. Because this is an infinite loop, we are occasionally able to recall memories which seem to be from the future. That's my explanation for the music, although the time period concerned is much shorter than my lifespan. As for the Christmas card, I have reason to believe my body includes an earlier cell line than the one initiated by my conception, which began in 1944. But I don't know. I'm open to explanations, spooky or otherwise. Okay, so I have a few different weird glitchy stories, but I'll start with this one. For a few years, my husband and I lived in West Virginia in this little town called Eleanor. Sort of weird in its own way, but that's not part of the story. Now, those of you who have heard of Mothman would know that Point Pleasant is also in West Virginia, and my husband and I would drive there every so often from Eleanor, taking the longer but less traveled way down the 62 through Buffalo and a number of small, unincorporated towns. Some of these were nothing more than a long, closed grocery store and a couple of double-wides. Anyway, so on the road past Buffalo, heading to Point Pleasant, there was some sort of glitchy area, but only in one direction. Just past the town of Leon was an area of basically mountain on one side, drop on the other. At a certain spot, I could show it to you if you were there, the radio would start cutting out, doing that static, whiny thing like it was trying to find the station, both coming and going. We just figured it was the mountain messing with the signal, which would make sense, no biggie, and we ignored it. When we drove home from Point, though, based on the time it took us to get there, we figured to arrive home at a certain time, and when we got there, we noticed we were 12 minutes earlier than we expected. Of course, I was just driving faster, right? Except I didn't think I was. That area is one you don't want to go over 55, really, but I also don't like to go too slow, so I would want to keep it around 50 the whole time. So we tested it. A couple of weeks later, we had a reason to be in point again and again took the back way through Buffalo and Leon. We logged the time passed out of Buffalo and the 35 mile an hour limit, and I maintained 50 the entire remaining distance to the Tiger Mart just outside of Point. We stopped at the Tiger Mart, logged the time immediately, and got a drink. On the way back home, we stopped at the Tiger Mart again, grabbed a drink, logged the time, and we headed off. Then we made sure to log the time right when we stopped, rather than after we went in for drinks, and right before we drove off as to not skew the time we were actually on the road. Anyways, I maintained 50 miles an hour all the way to Buffalo, where we stopped and logged the time. The return trip was 12 minutes shorter again. We did this several more times, almost like a scientific experiment, and every time the return trip was 12 minutes shorter. And if we had the radio on, it would mess up just after Leon for several miles. Again, this could be the mountain and not glitch related, but I included it because the first time it was the radio that caught our attention. I don't know why this happens. I just chalked it up as another weird thing about wild and wonderful West Virginia. This story is called Missing Phone Charger. Okay, I know the title sounds lame because everyone loses their phone charger, and I've definitely read crazier stories on here, but hear me out. One day, I cleaned my entire apartment. One thing about me is that when I get in this certain cleany mood, I get very perfectionist and everything is spotless. 
So when I needed to unplug my charger to plug something else in, I remember thinking to myself that maybe I should put the charger in a drawer, but I knew that I would be using the charger again later that day and plugging it back into the same plug, so even though it irked me just a little, I just put the charger on the floor below the outlet. When I went back to use my charger though, it was gone. I looked in the drawer where I considered putting it, thinking maybe I just didn't remember, but it wasn't there or anywhere in my room. I was home alone, so it couldn't have been someone else using it. I started looking all over the house and would periodically go back to where I knew I left it. I looked there probably four or five times and it was never there. I really started thinking I was crazy because I remembered having the debate in my head about whether to put it on the floor or to put it in a drawer and purposely leaving it on the floor. That again was spotless, it wasn't like it was a messy room with stuff all over the floor and it was hidden under something. Well, as I'm looking around the apartment, I go to check the spot yet again, and what do you know? It's back, exactly where I had put it on the ground below the outlet. I've told people in my life before and nobody believes me. They think that it had just maybe slid under the dresser magically or that I didn't see it. But I 100% knew exactly where I left it, that it wasn't there for about a half hour, and then it reappeared exactly where it was. Hmm. Now, before anyone says anything about how I must have left it home, no, I didn't. Because I know for a fact that I had it with me while I was out. I literally saw it fall out of my pocket into the vehicle and onto the flooring, but just left it because I didn't want to waste time picking it up. Half an hour later, I came back into the vehicle and I was getting ready to leave. I was set on getting it, but for some reason I couldn't find it. I know it was there somewhere, but after checking top to bottom, I was positive that it went through a crack in the door or got stuck in the seats themselves, which unfortunately is hard to dig into, but something small, like my AirPod case, would be able to slip in. I gave up and thought, oh well, that's a shame. Today just wasn't my day at all. Weird occurrences just be happening. However, five years later, and I just got home, I went into my room and I thought, what are the odds that it's here? And well, sure as heck it was. It was on my bed under my blanket. I don't know how it got there. I don't know who put them there, but it definitely wasn't me. Not only that, but the case is at 100%. It wasn't fully charged when I left earlier in the day. It was just halfway. So, how did I lose my AirPods case, and who charged them? Two months ago, I decided to get into herb gardening. I went to Home Depot and bought eight plants and a pair of bright pink gardening gloves. I got them home and unloaded all of those items from the trunk of the car onto a plain wooden bench in my garage. I carried the plants upstairs two by two and then came back for the gloves, but they were gone. I looked on the floor by the bench, in the car, upstairs with the plants, and no gloves. My boyfriend checked the same locations several times as well, no gloves. I checked my Home Depot receipt and I had paid for them and I decided they must have unfortunately missed bagging at Home Depot and gotten left behind. I moved on with my life and forgot about them. Fast forward to last weekend. My boyfriend and our friend were working on my car in the garage. I went outside to see how it was going and chatted with them for just a bit and out of the corner of my eye, suddenly I noticed something bright pink. It was the gardening gloves on the wooden bench exactly where I remembered leaving them, and exactly where both my boyfriend and I had searched fruitlessly two months ago for. Part of me wants to explain it away by saying my boyfriend and I somehow just didn't see them, but they're like neon pink on a wooden bench, so I don't know. So weird, and such a small and insignificant glitch, but they came in super clutch today when I had to plant two more plants, so 
I'm not mad about it. All right, so check this out. I used to be a cop in rural USA. One day, I get a check well-being call. I drive to the address, which is just a few minutes outside of town. When pulling into the property, I get an eerie feeling. I go to the residence, which was an older, modular home. The front door had a diamond-shaped window. After knocking for a bit, I began to hear noises sounding like a walking sound from the barn next to the residence. I was shining my flashlight around the property as it was nighttime and I had the feeling I was going to turn around and see someone standing in the window of the door. I checked the barn and I couldn't locate anyone or the source of the sound. After several minutes of knocking and no answer, I returned to service. Here's the glitch. I left the residence and drove back towards town. While on my way, I called a friend and co-worker and was telling him about the strange feeling and the sounds on the call. I was on the phone with him for over 15 minutes and I realized I was nowhere near town. After several more minutes of driving, I turned around and headed back towards the residence. I arrived at the driveway in a little over a minute. I turned around again and drove back towards town and made it in just a few minutes now. I don't know why it took so long and I can't explain it at all. And to cap off the creepiness, after I arrived back in town, the individual that I went to go check on called into my dispatch and thanked me for coming to check on him. He said he was watching me the entire time. When I was a kid, I lived in a really tall house. There was a central set of stairs that went four stories high that the house was built around. My parents' room was on the fourth floor while I lived on the third floor right next to the stairs. My childhood dog, this mutt named Bueller, would climb up the stairs most nights to go to sleep with my parents while occasionally sleeping with one of my siblings on the floor below me. Anytime Bueller was walking around the house, you could hear the clacks of his paws on the wooden planks. He would never head up at a consistent time either, going from as early as 8 to as late as midnight. Fast forward to July 2014. I'm 17 years old and Bueller had just passed. The house felt really empty for a while. We had gotten so accustomed to his clacks that it was just odd, you know, not hearing them anymore. But they kept on coming. For about two weeks after his death, I, along with my parents, heard Bueller climb the stairs every night. The sound was unmistakable. I heard this noise for years on end. It was the same pattern and same rhythm as Bueller in life, except, you know, Bueller was no more. There was no weather pattern going on, and the house wasn't especially creaky, and we didn't have any other pets other than him. It was never at the same time every night either. When it became late July, we stopped hearing Bueller's clacks. I asked my parents if they heard the noises and they agreed it had to be Bueller coming up the stairs. I will say that I never went to see what it was, just because I already definitively knew what it was. It was Bueller going to sleep with my parents. I recently decided to make a new start, changed professions, and became a teacher. I moved out to a small town to pay less rent and eat organic. All that, I'm in my mid-thirties and realized that living in a capital is financial madness. I've been here for about a month and a half, and my wife and I were in her parents' house until we moved to a small one-bedroom apartment at the back of a garage. It's pretty sweet. I know that the walk to the school I work at is about 15 minutes tops. But two days ago, I went to walk to work, and it was my first time from this apartment. Given that I'm new in town, I took out my Google Maps and went for it. I had 30 minutes to get there, and as I walked toward it, 
I saw a route that would be five minutes faster. Once I took it, 15 minutes jumped to 20, and then as I walked towards the school, the more the time increased. At 27 minutes, I stopped and called an Uber. I was a 15-minute drive from work. Fair enough. Seems like I just got lost, right? And then talking to the admin lady that follows up our system for attendance, she told me she once took a wrong turn here, and it took her three hours to find her way back. Not only that, she described the same houses that I did, and how none of us at the school knew what neighborhood that was. In a town that has three supermarkets and mostly hardware stores, and two drive throughs it's a bizarre experience. All the houses were white with nice hedges. It's odd since it's a rural area with houses that look nothing like that. Now... The thing that got me weirded out about it, it makes no sense how a 15 minute walk, I ended up being 45 minutes from my house in the next town, and more than 30 minutes from work. I walked for 17 minutes? I'd spent the morning mowing the yard, trimming bushes, and edging a long driveway and sidewalk, it was 90 degrees under the hot Florida sun and it was time for a water break and a bit of lunch. During the lunch break, I was able to clean my glasses and change my sweat-soaked t-shirt before resuming my yard work. I had another hour to go before the rocket launch and I needed to haul the debris I'd created to the curb for pickup. I live on Florida's east coast, about 30 miles due north of Cape Canaveral. On a clear day, you have an excellent view of the rocket launches from my neighbor's dock. The dock sits on the edge of Spruce Creek, a large tributary extending westward from the intracoastal waterway. The night launches are spectacular, and we often join our neighbors for cocktails on the dock when a night launch is scheduled. On this particular day, the launch was scheduled for just after 2 p.m., it was a cloudy day with high heat. Weather like this usually brings more clouds and rain, so I thought the chances of a launch were quite low, much less one that I could see through the billowing clouds. But I've seen hundreds of rocket launches, and I'm always hopeful. I finished my chores, so I grabbed a bottle of water from the fridge and headed to the dock. It was about 10 minutes to lift off, and I was sitting there all alone. The teak chairs on my neighbor's dock are large, heavy, and quite comfortable. I looked to the southeast towards a large pine tree in the distance. The rockets have always appeared about five degrees on either side of that tree when beginning their ascent. Now, this is when the glitch in the matrix shows up. I relaxed my eyes and looked for openings in the clouds. My vision extended upwards on the trajectory I imagined the SpaceX rocket would take. And suddenly, something changed in my vision. I could see the L-shaped sweat smudge on my prescription glasses as if it were under a microscope. My eyes were super focused on a dirty spot a half inch away from my retina. And this was something new to me. I was locked on, but it felt normal. This was an odd fixation, but not as odd as the background behind the smudge. The entire sky was networked hexagon shapes, anchored with silver spheres. Tiny dotted lines extended from each sphere as the large hexagon shapes interconnected. Everywhere in the cloudy eastern sky, the pattern was the same. It made me think of the Jim Carrey movie The Truman Show, and I was freaking out. Is this real? I asked myself. I observed this phenomenon for at least five whole minutes, all the time wondering if this was a glitch in the matrix or could I be looking at the inside of my eyeballs. I scanned each hexagon to see if there was any unusual movement out there, but I didn't detect any. I thought that a couple of the connecting strands looked different than the others. I was pondering this when my trance was broken by my dock-owning neighbor as she shouted from her back lanai. Hey, Jack. The guy on TV said the launch was canceled for today. I turned to look at her, and just like that, the smudge was out of focus and the network dissolved. 
Now, the Artemis rocket launch is scheduled for today at 2.17 p.m., and I can't wait to try and recreate this experience. Hey, long time lurker, first time poster. Now, before anyone asks, I don't think anyone is stealing from me or breaking in when I'm not home. I don't think my cleaning lady, my kid, or my partner would take this stuff and move it as some kind of a joke, and I don't think I have early onset dementia or anything like that. And no, I'm not OCD, I just know where my stuff is, and I learned at a really, really young age to have a place for everything and everything in its place. I've always been a bit sensitive. Although not a firm believer in the supernatural, I do think that the multi-world theory is at least plausible. The one where there are multiple universes running concurrently that sometimes overlap or intersect. Sometimes weird things happen to me or around me, and I've just largely learned to accept it and move on. When I was younger, I would have dreams about people who other people said simply did not and never did exist. I'd know stuff before it happened, or remember stuff that I could have never known. I found lost stuff easily, and sometimes weird things happened where stuff I knew I had just had had disappeared forever. I have lots of memories of things people swear never happened. Parents and siblings just chalked it up to an overreactive imagination of a highly creative and a bit odd child. I never quite felt in step with reality, but largely learned to deal with it and to keep my trap shut about the stuff that I experienced since it, you know, tended to weird some people out. So when the chance came up a couple of years ago, I took a leap of faith and bought the house I grew up in as a kid and I moved in. The house was exactly as I remembered it, down to the smell of the hard wood. There were a few remodeling things that had been done, but for the most part, I can still walk through the house with my eyes closed knowing how many steps it takes to get from one part of the house to another. I found myself feeling peaceful mentally for the first time in a long time. Now, I also tend to be pretty meticulous about where I put things. Items may seem disorganized to other people, but there is a logical sense and order to where things go. However, more recently, I felt that weird pressure that I used to feel when things just weren't in sync. And now, things are disappearing around me. A few weeks ago, I made a stew, which is really a conglomeration of meats and vegetables, which I always cook in a tall aluminum stew pot. It takes hours to make, and so I only do that in a big batch, three or four times a year, and freeze the rest. This time was significant because I was making it for a special occasion. When the cooking was done, the pot went into the sink to soak. My cleaning lady comes on Tuesday and Friday to help with certain tasks like the washing up and sweeping mopping. She remembers washing the pot because she had to scrub a little burnt off stuff off the bottom. I know the pot was put away because I put it away myself after she washed out the pan. It went on the pot rack with the lid on top just like it should. I went to grab the pot the other day to make a big batch of spaghetti sauce and now the entire pot is missing. The lid for it is right where it should be, but the pot is gone. We've searched everywhere for it, and it's nowhere to be found. It's even bothering my cleaning lady because I asked her if she knew where it went, and she couldn't find it anywhere either. Next, stuff seems to be missing from my bathroom medicine cabinet. I keep small pill bottles with labels on them for OTC medicine so that they stay organized. It's nothing expensive, just basic things like... OTC antihistamines, nothing with ephedrine, like think Claritin and migraine pills, diarrhea medicine, ibuprofen, stuff like that. I actually have everything in a specific place because if I need something, I know just where to go for it. Several bottles of OTC medications are gone. Not empty, just gone, leaving an empty space in the cabinet. I asked my partner to come look tonight. He also said that there was some stuff missing because there's no empty space in the cabinet usually. And aside from him, 
Me and the cleaning lady, there's practically never anyone in the house. Kid comes home occasionally to do laundry, but there's no reason for the kid to take a whole bottle of aloe vera cooling gel from the cabinet. Later, I find this stuff in places that I would never think that I would have put them or moved them to. Again, the cleaning lady and my partner and our kid would have zero reason to move this stuff to the weird places that I've been finding them. Every time I experience these kinds of glitches, it's so super weird. Sorry if this is kind of long, but I've been lurking on this sub for ages and finally have the courage to post. I need to start this off by explaining the layout of my house. It's a tall, thin house. I spend most of my time on the same floor as the garage. I have my room down there, and it has my TV and desk and whatnot. The kitchen and living room are on the next floor up. And this all starts with what my parents do to get my attention. They normally walk into the living room and stomp on the floor a few times to get my attention. I normally just crack my door open and shout up at them. So, the first time that I experienced this glitch was a few months ago. I was sat at my desk like normal and then I heard the three stomps coming from upstairs. I cracked my door open and just before I opened my mouth to shout back, I realized that my parents were away for the weekend. I was scared crapless, but brushed it off as me hearing things since it's a noise that I hear all the time, and I also had headphones in. A few days later, the day that my parents are getting back, I'm stood by my desk and I hear the stomping again. This time I just stood still for a second and then just opened the garage and sat outside until my parents got back. I told my parents and we all had a laugh about ghosts and whatnot. The usual when talking about this kind of stuff. A few months go by and now it's August. My parents are away again and I'm in my room. I don't have my headphones on this time and I hear the three stomps again. And then the lights on the stairs come on. Now, I need to mention that these are motion sensor lights. Little LEDs that come on when you walk down the stairs. I freak out and just stand still frozen, nearly crying, thinking that I'm about to be murdered by the stomping ghost. Of course, nothing happens and the lights go back off. This might not be the most exciting glitch, but I can't figure out why I only hear these noises when my parents aren't home. Is this some strange, common sound phenomenon that I'm not aware of? This happened a little while ago, and I'm so glad I remembered it because it's a perfect fit for this particular sub. On one stormy Friday night, I decided I wanted to have a nice glass of Coke before going to sleep. Yeah, I know. Caffeine doesn't help with that, but hey, I have an addiction. But the case of coke inside just ran out and I would have to go outside into the trunk of my car to get the other case that I bought. Because it was raining and flooding with a pretty high water level just outside my porch, I decided and distinctly remember thinking, I'm going to wait until morning so I don't get soaked right before bed. I then head off to bed. It took me a few hours to fall asleep. Now, a very important detail to note here is that it stopped storming outside while I was still awake. By the time I fell asleep, it wasn't raining anymore, and an hour or so into my slumber, the flood would have cleared. So the next morning I woke up, I chowed down a bowl of cereal, and since Coke is my coffee substitute, I go to put my shoes on and... What the frick? There's a huge puddle right below my shoes and they're absolutely drenched. I'm not talking like sandals or crocs here. I mean, these things hold water like a sponge, and they were soaked. I was very weirded out by this, but I just blew it off and went to the car to get my Coke. This is just one of those strange memories that you forget about and are reminded of one day. There's no explanation for it. I didn't go out that night. I have no history of sleepwalking or anything of that nature. 
And even if I did somehow end up going outside and don't remember, how were they so soaked? The flood was cleared by the time I would have gone out, and even if it didn't, the shoes would have been damp by morning and dried a bit, not fully soaked like a sponge with a visible puddle underneath it. And even if I did go outside, why would I have not brought the coke in with me? The case of coke was still in my trunk, untouched. This happened just this weekend. I was at a friend's place, and close to midnight, I called one of those cheap, shared taxis because they're one-third of the original price. The shared ones usually have a yellow taxi sign on them, and the regular ones here are green. My friend decided to walk me to the taxi stand because it had gotten fairly late. We set off, and soon after stepping outside, I recognized the familiar yellow light in the distance. I hadn't been at her new place since she moved, so I assumed that would be a stand. I pointed to the supposed taxi and said, That must be it. Do you think so? I didn't get a response out of her, so I repeated myself, but to no avail. As we got closer, I could recognize the light get more distinctive. I could clearly read the bold black taxi in front of a yellow overlay. I turned my head to my friend, demanding an answer this time. The shared ones are yellow. Is this the stop? But as I turned my head again, the sign was gone. I looked at it in disbelief, and even after we'd passed the car, I looked back a few times. It was there. I did see it. It just vanished into thin air. I immediately asked my friend if she'd seen it, but she said she didn't pay any attention to it, which is weird because I asked her about it a couple of times. I don't think it could have been a visual glitch. It was the only car on the road. It literally just disappeared, almost right before my eyes. Back when I was in my early 20s, I worked for a certain retail store that doesn't really exist anymore. It's a certain store that started with a K and ended with a major bankruptcy. Sorry, that was a bad joke. Anyways, I worked for Kmart, and I was in my 20s, as I said, and I had the amazing job of cleaning up the store when people made it a mess, which was incredibly frequent. There was one weekend near the end of the year where we were running a number of sales to try and make higher sales numbers for the Christmas season, and I was working double shifts because I was the only janitor that was employed at the store at that time. My town is decent sized, and while I like to believe that I have a lot of friends and I know a lot of people, there's no way that I could know everybody. But we did have a lot of people coming in and buying a ton of stuff for the holidays. It was in the middle of one of my shifts. I was running the floor cleaner over one half of the store, and I pulled down an aisle that had a few young ladies standing there checking out the makeup. I tried not to push the cleaner down aisles where there were people, but by the time I noticed they were there I had already made the turn, so I just figured I would take it slow. As I got closer, I noticed one of the girls a little more than the other, because she was, to me, incredibly attractive, but also somewhat familiar. I was single at the time, and like I said, in my 20s, so I puffed up a bit and tried to clean the floor with some extra gusto. I approached the trio, and I kind of tried to make eye contact with the one that I wanted to notice me, by glancing over at her every few moments. Then, the weirdest thing happened to me. She looked up at me, and we made eye contact, and I felt like I knew her. I don't mean that she just kind of looked familiar, I felt like I knew her very well. As I approached, I slowed the floor cleaner, and the two of us just locked eyes and stared for a few moments. After a couple of seconds, she sort of tilted her head and said, Tony? Tony, my last name? 
and I immediately responded with Claire. Claire, her last name, right? It felt as if the two of us had known each other for years, though I know for a fact that neither of us had ever seen the other before this exact moment. We both tried to place where we knew each other for a few moments. I asked where she went to high school, and she mentioned that she attended a school an entire state over, and she had just moved there. We talked about summer camps we attended, places we'd worked. Hell, we even started talking about family to see if maybe the other was a friend of the family. Neither of us could place the other person at all. There was literally no way that we knew each other or could have known the other one prior to this moment. We knew each other's names, and I felt like I knew what she liked and who she was as a person. It was one of the weirdest moments of my life, as it was like the second we met eyes, we each downloaded the other person's information, if that makes sense. We really could not place the other person in our lives anywhere, but it almost felt like we were long childhood friends. After a few awkward moments, we basically told each other that it was nice to see the other person, and then went about our business. I went back to cleaning the floor, and she and her friends went back to looking at the makeup. I kind of wish that there was more to this, and that we became friends or more, but we honestly never saw each other again. At all. I do remember her name, and I've tried to look her up on Facebook, but I can't find anyone with that name. The only thing that I can think of is that we were supposed to know each other, or somehow knew each other in another life, and the information all flooded back when we saw each other. It's one of those moments that I never forgot, and I guess it was pretty cool how it happened, but really? It kind of weirded me the hell out for a while, and it's never left my mind. Alright, so check this out. This one's been on my mind for a while now. I've been wanting to get your opinion since I joined Reddit, but I never really dared to, so here I go. In 2018, a group of friends from college and I decided to go and spend a month in Berlin over the summer. We spent our time between part-time jobs, partying and just simply enjoying the city and its cultural activities. Everyone in the group was cycling places except for me. We had a bit of a bike situation with mine and so I decided to spend the rest of our time there on foot or using the U-Bahn. It wasn't that much of a bother until we decided to go and party near the river Spree. This place has bars and clubs and it's overall a great place to party, but from what I recall, public transportation didn't go that far in the middle of the night. They had all cycled there, so I was the only one without means to go back to our apartment. It was a 20 minute cycle from the bar, but it was at least a 35 minute walk. A friend of mine, I'll call her Eva for the sake of this story, decided to walk back with me and just take her bike next to her as to not leave me alone wandering around the city in the middle of the night. It was about 4 a.m. Here comes the glitch. As we were walking down this rather big street and just chatting, I remember smelling food and seeing this restaurant past the pedestrian crossing to which we were headed. I am a foodie and I was rather hungry so this was pretty appealing. A woman was sitting there having food, black hair, and I could see her profile through the large windows which took almost the entire wall up to the ceiling. I remember thinking, damn, that's weird that they're still open at this time of the night. I gotta tell Eva when the flow of the conversation allows. As I was walking and starting to cross the road, which was the crossing in front of the restaurant, Things got blank and it was like I was on autopilot. I was hearing her voice kind of muffled. Once we were past the restaurant, Eva stopped, turned to me and said, wait, wasn't there a restaurant just there with a woman eating? I had completely forgotten to tell her. It's like 
My memory had been wiped and restored within seconds, and there it was, now a hotel. The large windows were the same, and inside was the hotel's restaurant, with a layout and tables that looked nothing like what we saw. No woman was eating there either. We were both very shocked and saw that a receptionist, a male with short hair, was in there, and I knew we just had to ask him if somebody was eating there just now. It was just too freaking weird. He was kind of freaked out about us coming in like that and said that he had been alone for hours. After discussing it with Eva, we found out that she saw the woman eating as well, but she only saw her back and she was seated with her back to the window. However, I could tell this woman was Asian because she was seated showing her profile to me. After that, Eva never wanted to talk about it again. She even got mad when I tried to bring it up again. Also, people seemed to have changed around me after this event. Even my mom didn't remember something that she should have. A lot of people seemed different overall. And I must also note that I wasn't drunk, and staying up this late was really common for me at that stage of my life, so sleep deprivation was probably not a factor. Oh, and fun fact, the name of the hotel is the Grimm Hotel, in reference to the author of many fairy tale stories. Oh, but this story is true though, <laughs> it's not a fairy tale. If you live in Berlin, or are planning a visit there and want to see this for yourself, you can. It's in the Alta Jakobstrasse. Feel free to look it up. I heard about this subreddit through a podcast and thought it was the right place to share my story and hopefully get some good insight and opinions from people who may have experienced or know of something similar. In 2012, when I was 16 years old, me and my six or so friends went to Thorpe Park. It's a theme park here in the UK. The new ride, The Swarm, had just opened, so of course we were going straight there. We queued for about 45 minutes before being sent to the stands on the second row of about 12 rows. The carriage ahead had just been loaded and a very large black dude, probably at least six foot seven, was placed in his seat. As the ride was about to go, an attendant came over and told this guy that he was too big to ride and had to go wait outside for his party to finish the ride. Now, this guy, like I said, was absolutely huge, big afro, and basically incredibly rememberable. Anyway, after he had been on the ride, I again remember seeing him outside with his friends. They were loudly taking the piss out of him for not being allowed on, basically. Fast forward about 14 months, and we went to Thorpe Park again. I believe it was more or less the same group of friends that I had went with before, give or take maybe one or two people. Again, we of course went on the swarm. We waited around 45 minutes again, and we were sent to the same stands, second from the front, with my same three friends who came on my row last time. As the ride was about to leave, an attendant came over and told a certain gentleman he was too big to ride. As I looked over, it was the exact same person as before. I know for an absolute fact this six foot seven inch humongous man was the same person from before. I remembered him distinctly. Everything was the same. The way he climbed out of his chair, the way he walked off and went outside. The only thing I don't remember is whether or not it was the same attendant. As I was honestly so flabbergasted about what I was seeing. I turned to my friends and I said, what the frick? That's the same guy from last time in the exact situation. Nobody paid much attention to me, but they kind of acknowledged it, I guess. Maybe nobody remembered the time before like I did. I kept going on about it for a few good minutes, but nobody seemed to listen or care. By the time we got off the ride, this time he wasn't waiting with his friends. One of the things that I always found odd about this is the fact that I never remembered seeing this guy in line both times that I went. 45 minute waits each time 
and I never once noticed this huge guy standing where he would have been like 30 people ahead of me. And trust me, same huge afro, six foot seven dude, he would have been easily noticed. Since then, I've mentioned it maybe twice to my friends who were there and they all look at me like I was crazy or they have a look of, I vaguely remember something and probably just want me to stop talking. My own assessment is that this really was just the biggest coincidence ever and it just so happened that myself and this guy ended up going to the same theme park on the same days, on the same ride at the exact same time and having the exact same situation play out 14 months apart. But that's impossible, right? Now, the person that submitted this next story actually stumbled upon my channel just a day before we asked him for permission to read his story. That might be a glitch in itself. <laughs> Anyways, Reddit user Cyberactive42, hey, this one's yours. I've always been interested in these stories from people and I've always loved reading through them. They're unnerving in a way that's really specific and and I felt that yesterday as I was working. I just started a job a few months ago at a local bakery. It's really well known locally and we do good business right up until closing. Well, yesterday it was five minutes till closing when a guy walks in and starts looking around. I was mildly annoyed but people who come in late usually have a little self-awareness and leave a bit of a nicer tip. He looked around for a bit and brought up some retail items for me to ring up and bag, specifically two jars of jam, a box of scones, and a bag of granola. At this point, we were the only two people in the entire building. I reached down to get a bag and put only those items in the bag. I know I only put one bag of granola in because they're big and the other items have to be arranged around it. He's paying with his card and as I'm looking the other direction for just a moment as he's leaving a tip, he says, oh, sorry, I only wanted one bag of granola. I was confused and I told him there was only one bag in there, to which he pointed and there was a second bag sitting right up against the first, now making the bag bulge. He wanted to know if I'd rang him up for two, to which I said no we kind of sat there for a second looking back at the extra bag and the receipts in confusion. I really have no idea how the second large bag of granola got there. It's big and has a noisy paper bag. I would have heard him put it in there, much more seen him. He never walked away or moved from the register at all either. I can't really explain it. Hmm. So, we have this little metal tool that we use to unlock any of the doors in our house if they've been accidentally locked from the inside. The only way I can describe it is that it looks like a tiny crowbar, hook at one end and flat head on the other. We had been keeping this tool in the cabinet area above the air conditioner. Well, around two months ago, I had accidentally shut my bathroom door with the lock engaged. I went to grab the tool to unlock the door like always and it was gone. I checked all around the cabinet and the floor but it was nowhere. I even checked the tops of the door frames where it used to be but no, the tool just disappeared. None of us really thought anything of it, I mean things get lost all the time and we eventually found another tool that looked different from the original by the way to replace it. Well, today, actually around two hours ago, my mom had opened that air conditioner cabinet for something, and lo and behold, there was the original tool in its rightful place, and she was so confused. I laughed about it, telling her it was a glitch in the matrix. She's not really a big believer of things like glitches, but I'm a big fan of glitch stories, so knowing she experienced a glitch along with me was just amusing. Hmm. 
This happened two years ago when I was staying with my sister, my brother, and his girlfriend. It happened pretty quickly. My brother and my sister and I were all on the bed watching Rick and Morty on Hulu when the TV turned black. I thought it was a server lag or an iffy TV, but after a brief second, I saw myself in the TV. It was almost like the whole TV screen was recording all of us sitting and watching it. After another brief second, it went away and the show started again. I was surprised and scared at what happened and turned to see their reactions, but they claimed to have not seen what I saw. I tried to explain what I saw, but after seeing their reactions, I stopped. Then it got weirder. A couple of weeks later, I was home with my brother's girlfriend and sister, and we started talking about something that must have been relevant to what had happened. Sending shivers down my spine as she told her story, I wanted to crawl away from the exact TV in front of us. And she told me that, which later I found out happened four days after my incident, that when she was watching a show on Hulu, the screen cut off and she saw herself. She was so shocked and surprised that she didn't think anyone would believe her until I told her that it happened to me. My sister had started getting freaked out about the event and didn't want us to talk about it anymore, and we still don't when she's around. To this day, we debate ideas about what it was and if it really actually ever happened. Now that we both have different accounts of the same glitch, I wonder if it's happened to anyone else, or if it can even be explained. This literally just happened to me. I live in an old apartment building across from a large city park, and I was feeling pretty lazy this morning, so I ordered breakfast on Seamless. Because my building is old, the buzzer doesn't always work, so I put in the order that the delivery guy should meet me outside, and when he was almost there, I would go out front to meet him. The time came, and I looked up and across the street at one of the park entrances. I saw a woman and her dog. Not an unusual sight at a park in an area where people don't have yards. She had dark hair and wore the kind of outfit normal for walking a dog. Plain black leggings, gray and pink walking shoes, and a white t-shirt with the logo from a city marathon a few years back. Her dog was black and white with a hot pink collar and a leash. She crosses the street with her dog. We exchange a polite greeting as she passed me to go into my building. I guess she's a neighbor. And I think nothing of it. Until I look up and I see her across the street as if she never crossed. She's turning to go into the park. Same woman, same sneakers, same shirt same dog even with the same collar and leash. This is my first time experiencing something like this. I'm just not sure what happened. So, this happened last year, and for a bit of backstory, I've been a scout since I was seven years old. We meet up once a week at our base, which is an old-ish building with windows made out of a thick plastic material instead of glass and a pretty big patio. There is one particular window that I think must have been applied wrong because it constantly slams against the wall at the slightest breeze, and it's the only window in the building that does this. Anyways, last year, we had just started meeting up in person again, and there wasn't much of a protocol yet, so we were just getting together for a few hours and hanging out. On one of those days, one of the girls gets the bright idea to throw rocks at the wall to see if they break. It's dumb, I know, but that's what you get when you put a bunch of bored 15-year-olds together with little supervision. On one of her throws, she accidentally aimed higher and hit the window that slams itself on the wall, and she breaks it. She immediately stopped throwing rocks after that. I remember being pretty bummed out by the window breaking because it had been there for so long, 
and we joked about it being an end of an era of sorts, but other than that, we quickly moved on from it and went on with our day. The weird part happened next week. We went to the base and I noticed that the window was still intact. At first, I thought they may have replaced it, which seemed unlikely since they don't really fix anything in the base in such a short notice and without mentioning anything. I ruled it out completely when I heard it slam against the wall again. So I found it pretty much impossible that they would have not only replaced the window less than a week after it was broken, but also replaced it in the same wrong way that it was originally. I later asked the girl that broke the window and other people that saw it happen, and they all confirmed that the window was broken, and they were just as dumbfounded as me as to why it was back together. Hmm. Well, I'm not quite sure how to explain this, but here it goes. There's something that I once saw, which always seemed strange when I saw it, and from time to time, I remember it again. I've tried to find information about it, but I've never been able to find any mentions of it from other people. I've told a couple of people about it over the years, but no one ever really quite understood. Today, and I'm not sure why, I remembered it again, and this time, I also remembered about this subreddit. So, I guess I'll tell you folks about this, since if anyone might be in the right mindset to understand, it's you. It was fall of 1995. I was in my college dorm at UT Austin, the Jester Dormitory. As a side note, this dorm is so huge, at one point, it literally had its own zip code. There's a giant two-story cafeteria that feeds two 14-story towers of college students. There are also a number of doors with no handles that lead into windowless areas, which I never saw anyone ever enter or leave. At the time, each room had super fast 500 megabytes per second internet and cable TV. This is all just for context's sake. I don't remember why I was up late with my roommate's TV on in my dorm room on this particular night. However, to this day, I clearly remember what happened next. The TV suddenly went silent. It had been playing late night garbage infomercials or whatever. At first, I just kept studying, but then my roommate says, did you turn the TV off? I turned to look at the TV, but before I could answer, a video began playing of a camera shot sweeping across a landscape. The sound slowly faded in with just wind noise. We control what you see. We control what you hear. The camera shot flies into the window of a house, showing a woman putting clothes into a front-load washing machine. Not exactly a common type in 95, I don't recall seeing one in real life until the 2010s. Anyway, suddenly, the woman freezes in place, motionless, and the clothes and water inside the washing machine also freeze, yet the camera keeps zooming around them. There's silence for a moment, and then the voice continues. In order that you can trust that what you see on the news is real, we intentionally ensure our ability to create a 100% convincing simulation of reality is not misused. As he's speaking, the woman and the clothes in the washing machine morphed from looking 100% photorealistic to looking like 90s era movie special effects where you could easily tell it's computer generated. Up to this point, however, they had looked completely real. Now. The animation resumes and the now CGI woman closes the washing machine. The camera lowers down and zooms in on the clothes cycling around in the wash. Then, as the clothes in the wash suddenly decomposed into the underlying wireframes of the animation and the water morphed into a sea of ones and zeros, the voice said, We are the geniuses of the information superhighway. Then, the screen went black for a moment. Suddenly, 
the video cut back to an in-progress infomercial with the infomercial guy in the middle of a sentence. I quickly hit the mute button and turned to my roommate. Dude, did you just see that weird ad? What was that even an ad for? He's like, what ad? You mean that crappy infomercial that's been playing for the last half hour? I said, no, I mean the ad that came on after you asked me if I had turned off the TV. He said, what? I never asked you that. Then he leans in, <laughs> says, dude, are you on LSD? I say, what? No, I mean like two minutes ago, you said specifically, did you turn off the TV after it went quiet? He told me, this infomercial has been on since 3.30. I looked and I distinctly remember it was 3.38 a.m. And then I described what I had seen to him and he says, I think you dreamt that. But I know that I didn't. Does anyone remember seeing this footage? If so, please let me know. My maternal grandmother passed away in January. My mom was very close to her, but I wasn't. She lived far away and I hadn't seen her since I was like 13. When my mom went to gather some of her possessions, she brought me a shirt. It was a very distinct shirt. A small, petite-sized blouse. It was white with blue stripes and blue floral patterns. The brand was Croft & Barrow. I've had it in my possession for months. I was at my mom's house doing laundry yesterday, and I have two laundry baskets, a small wicker basket, and a large white hamper. I laundered the clothes in the white hamper first, and when I was folding the first load of clothes, the first shirt I took from the dryer was my grandma's shirt. I folded it and put it at the bottom of the white hamper, and then I moved on. I did two more loads of laundry that day. The next load of clothes, I was checking them to see if they were dry, and I saw my grandmother's shirt in there. Again, it's a very distinct pattern compared to the rest of my clothes. I don't do a lot of stripes and I don't own any other blouses. I was confused because I thought I had just folded it, but hey, I figured maybe I was just being forgetful. But. The tag looked different. The brand said something different entirely. But I figured maybe I was just misremembering the brand. I was then asking myself, did my mom put this shirt in here? Did she give me two similar shirts? So I restart the dryer and I let them go a little longer. Then when it stops, I fold it and I end up coming across my grandma's shirt with a weird feeling. I folded it and put it in the wicker basket. Today, I'm putting away all of my laundry. I emptied the white hamper first, and at the bottom is my grandma's shirt. Croft and Barrow, sized petite. At this point, I'm really confused. I move on to the wicker basket. No similar shirt in there whatsoever. And I just feel so weird and confused about the whole thing. What the heck happened? The day after she passed, I was very upset. I wanted to be alone, so I went to a creek, and I ended up finding ten heart-shaped rocks in one spot. No, well, that's my story. Not super dramatic, but I hope you liked it. Alright, so check this out. When I was younger, I was left suspended in the air for a split second. When I was about 17, I was playing football, or soccer for my American friends, with my mates at the park. I jumped up to head the ball. I'm a pretty short dude. I'm not exactly the most athletic person, so it's not like I was trying to jump like Michael Jordan or anything. But I can safely say I've never jumped higher than I did that time, either before or since. I felt like I wasn't going to stop. When I reached my apex, I stopped in mid-air, and it was only for a brief moment, but I felt my body become weightless before I began my descent. I'm trying my best not to say that I floated, but that's how it felt. 
I wasn't even going to bring it up with my friends at the time. Although it confused me, I knew if I said anything, they would have just shrugged me off, so I wasn't going to bother. It wasn't until everyone was asking me how I was able to jump so high and stating that they saw me stop midair that I started to freak out. Having them all confirm that they actually saw what happened made me think that this was a real glitch. Maybe this is super common, I don't know. We don't have cable, but we've always had an antenna for local channels. I was sitting with my husband just now and I was thinking, even though we usually stream our favorite shows and movies, I find myself having to leave the room during important live sporting events because I just totally F up the antenna and the incoming picture. The picture is always messed up and the connection is so bad that I'm happy to step out because I know it probably bugs my husband. I just can't stand the skipping sounds and the messy delayed picture when I'm near it. What prompted me to post this was, this has occurred in our previous house as well. We moved about eight months ago. And these antenna anomalies happen with multiple antennas as well. And now that I think about it some more, it's always been an issue, but just for me, Sometimes I'll be by myself wanting to check out a current news event and I just can't because the antenna is so jumbled. But my husband will have no problem. He's watching some racing event right now and I can hear it running with no problem as I'm typing this. But as soon as I walked by the antenna to grab some laundry, the TV begins to skip. I remember laughing about it in our previous house too. Does this happen to anybody else? We had to go out of state so I could get surgery and ended up being gone for just over a week. When we got back, my boyfriend decided he needed to cut the grass. Our lawnmower is kept in our locked shed, only we have the key, in our fenced-in backyard. It's an electric mower, very angular and lime green. It also doesn't work and he was going to try to fix it. He came in from the outside and asked me, what does our lawnmower look like? And was visibly weirded out. Uh, it's bright green? Yeah, it's bright green. I went outside with him and in our locked shed was a very rounded small black electric lawnmower that also didn't work. It was absolutely not the one we had put in the shed last time. It was not the one we bought. Nothing had been tampered with. The lock was still in place. Neither of us have ever seen this mower before, and nobody we could think to ask knew what we were talking about. This happened around 2018. It was just before 3 p.m., and it was a clear summer day. The sky was totally blue. I was completely sober, as was my mother who was with me, and I feel like I need to preface this as both my mother and I questioned what happened at the time, mostly our sanity. The day started normal, it was around 11am when my technology started bugging out. Not weird, that could have been caused by anything, but in all honesty, looking back, it added to the strangeness of what was about to happen, related or not. My mother and I went to pick up my younger sister, who's 10, from school, and as I said, this was just before 3 p.m. It's maybe a 15 to 20 minute walk from home to the school. The first five minutes were a breeze. I was on the phone talking to a friend, finishing up our conversation, and when I went to hang up, my phone started freaking out. It sounded exactly like that early 2000s noise when you're sat at the computer with speakers and a call comes in that static beeping interference noise i'm not sure how to explain it but if you lived through those times you'll know exactly what i mean regardless i put it down to just being another odd thing things happen right it's whatever this is where the stranger part happened i put my phone in my pocket and continued walking with my mom 
We walked past a bus stop and as soon as we walked past it, it was like time stood still. There was a weird cloud. It looked almost like it was a square. The sky turned a dark gray and like I said, this was a clear summer's day just moments ago with no clouds in sight when we left the house. When we were initially walking up the path, there were plenty of cars and the sound of engines, but when we got to this bus stop, nothing. No cars, no people, which was strange because it was the time that all the kids were coming out of school, and the strangest thing of all was there was no sound of wind or nature at all. I know it makes no sense because of course there wouldn't be wind on a summer's day, but I mean there was no noise at all. Complete silence. It felt like we were walking in a ghost land. It was eerily silent for what should have been lively. I can't put into words how quiet it was. We walked for what felt like hours and we both felt like we were retracing our steps until we came to the end of the road and things slowly went back to how they were. It felt almost like hiking in a high altitude. As soon as my mother and I walked past that bus stop, it felt like the world stood still and the sky looked entirely different from what we had seen just seconds ago before we walked up to the bus stop. Neither of us can explain it and we still talk about it every so often. If anyone can explain this at all or tell me about a similar experience of yours, I'd be grateful. Just a premise, I'm one of the most skeptical people when it comes to the paranormal, and I'm often skeptical about the things on this page. However, I have had one inexplicable experience in my entire life that I have to get off my chest, and I remember it to this day so vividly. I've lived in the same city my entire life in the USA and there was this Circle K convenience store very close to where I lived. At the time, I knew the same four or five employees at the store. The store only has one entrance, which also serves as the exit, and the parking lot in front of the store is the only parking lot. The store also only has one bathroom, which is designed for one person at a time. Back in March of 2011, I drove to the Circle K, and right about the same time, this white car next to me pulled up. I'm not sure what kind of car it was, but it was quite a beater, to say the least. Right when I was getting out of the car, the woman driving the white car had gotten out of it. She walked in the Circle K. I took some time to empty out some trash from my car, and I entered the store about a minute later. Keep in mind, this woman hadn't left the store yet and there was only one entrance which also served as the exit. Aside from the woman who worked there, I was the only one in the main part of the store, so I just assumed the woman I saw walking from the car was in the bathroom. I got my snacks and went up to the counter. I already knew the clerk well, we would open up to each other about many things, and I had to ask if a woman walked in and was possibly in the bathroom. I just thought it was odd that this woman was using the restroom for close to 10 minutes at this time. Anyway, I described what the woman looked like to the clerk. She was very pale, white, obviously, had black hair, brown eyes, she was medium height, and as soon as I mentioned her, very low waist to hip ratio, she has an abnormally large butt and huge hips and thighs compared to her little waist. The clerk gasped. She told me she knew exactly who I was talking about, and she also told me she was a regular customer. But what she said next to me gives me chills to this day. She told me this woman hadn't entered the store on this day. I told her I saw her walk in right before I did, and she told me she was at the counter and never saw her. We were both baffled. I obviously wasn't seeing things, because the clerk told me I described a regular customer, and this was somebody I had never seen before. When I walked out of the Circle K, her car was still there, 
So I just sat in my car for five minutes, but left, because I didn't want to seem creepy anyway. I never found out if she came back for that car. The only thing I can think of is this woman from the car walked in the store, was doing something shady in the bathroom, maybe drug dealing, drugs, etc., and was in cahoots with the clerk, and the clerk was playing dumb with me. Even though I knew the clerk, this doesn't mean she didn't have any secrets she wouldn't tell me. Other than that, I don't know. She disappeared into thin air. I was always intrigued by this topic, but never had experienced it myself until today. Well, I think I just experienced my first glitch. So, this afternoon, my partner is out and I'm cooking dinner for one and on dog walking duties. My dog and I eat our dinner and I take him for a quick toilet break and then as normal, I clean the kitchen from my messy cooking. I'm washing up and we have these fancy tall glasses that we recently got and love. As I place one of the draining boards to dry, it slightly clips another cup and I hear it smash. Except, it doesn't smash. Nothing does and everything is fine. I check as I don't want someone eating or drinking off of something that has broken glass on it or in it. And I equally don't want it dropping on the floor to cut my feet or my dog's paws. I brush it off as being weird and continue washing up and then decide to move the cups and glasses I have already washed up so I have more room for other large dishes and then continue to wash up, which includes another one of these fancy glasses. I place it on the draining board to dry. My sponge is all out of soap, so I reach for the liquid and... Suddenly, the glass is flying to the floor and it's smashing. The exact sound that I heard moments ago, except now it's actually broken. I swear, it basically happened in slow motion, or it felt like it did to me. I don't know if this counts as a glitch or not, but it was crazy weird, and I'm still a little confused by it. I didn't knock the glass or touch it, and it wasn't the same glass that I clipped with the other cups that didn't break. Does this sound like a glitch? So, I live in an apartment with my girlfriend and our four cats. I moved here last summer and she moved in a few months ago. This has been happening for a while, but lately, it's been escalating. We keep some recipe and cookbooks on top of a set of kitchen cabinets so they're very high up against the wall, almost near the ceiling. Only one of our cats is a slight climber, and because of how the cabinet area is designed, he can't really get up there. There's nothing to hold on to and no space up there for him to fit anyway. Several days ago, we noticed that the topmost cookbook was sliding off of its pile, hanging precariously down as though it were just about to fall. We fixed it, only for this to happen again just a few hours later. The same book, the exact same hanging and almost falling position. The book isn't glossy to where it would slide off the other books, and we don't have any nearby air vents that would shift it. And besides, it's a heavy book. We've also found kitchen drawers pulled wide open when we come home after both having been out together. We've approached certain rooms to find that their doors like the bathroom door and the door to my personal room, closed seemingly of their own accord when we know that after we left those rooms, we had the doors open all the way. We've had objects, like an empty can of vegetables that I know we tossed into the recycling bin and took out to the garbage room, suddenly reappear on the counter when we walk into the kitchen. We've come home to find pictures on the wall, suddenly crooked, or one of my music CD booklets on display suddenly turned sideways when I always have it facing front. I've had very dark spiritual experiences in my life, but also plenty of situations where it was just coincidence or it was a very human cause, so I don't want to jump to it's something spiritual, but it's like things are piling up and 
just becoming harder to explain away, and it's unnerving and confusing. I've considered the possibility that someone is screwing with us, but we always lock our door, and the building has good security. Like, you basically need a separate key to even get into the lobby. And plus, there's always a guard on watch downstairs. Our cats may be clever or mischievous, but not to that degree. We're not really sure what's going on. This happened a few months ago. I began to experience a spontaneous kundalini awakening after some acupuncture treatments. For those of you that don't know what that means, long story short, kundalini is a form of energy. I think it's chi or prana, etc. But it's like the tap gets turned on full blast and it feels like electricity pulsing through your body. But for me, it's more like swishing water. It can also cause electrical objects to react to you and, in some cases, poltergeist activity, and I think that's what happened here. I have a collection of antique Kokeshi dolls from Japan, and one of them is of a small person sitting in the bath. It's beautiful, and it also has a washcloth on its head. A while ago, my daughter was playing with them and accidentally pulled the cloth off of its head, so... At the moment, it's just resting on there with no adhesive. I took my dolls down off of their shelf to dust them, and when I got to the one that was sitting in the bath, I took its cloth off too to clean it properly, and when I put it back on the shelf, I placed the cloth back on its head. But then it began to spin like it was being pulled by a string until it came to a rest at a certain point. I know it sounds like it could have been wind or... A weird angle, but I'm telling you, there was no wind, and it was not a natural gravitational movement either. It was like someone turning a hat until they had it on their head, just how they liked it. It was so bizarre that I just burst out laughing. I've had many paranormal experiences in my life, so this one didn't scare me. I think it was either a trickster having fun with me, a friendly spirit, or maybe the doll has some kind of energy attached to it. Whatever it was, I got a kick out of it. I've cleaned that doll multiple times and it hasn't happened since. Just that one time. Back in 2013, my mom passed away three weeks after my daughter was born. We spent three days in the funeral home and each day... I brought in my daughter's electric bottle warmer. It's the kind where you put water in and there's also a plastic ring designed to keep the heat and the steam inside. The last day, I remember in the morning heating a bottle at the funeral home. When it was time to leave, I went to grab my things and I noticed that the plastic ring of the bottle warmer was missing. It's light blue and a bit bigger than the circumference of a baby bottle. Me, my husband, and an employee of the funeral home searched for it everywhere in the room that it was in, but we never found it. I thought it probably fell into the garbage, or somebody might have accidentally taken it. I didn't think it was a big deal, so I just used a dishcloth around the bottle to help keep the steam in. Life goes on. I have to mention, we had a small hatchback car. The trunk was pretty small, so we loaded and unloaded it frequently. Fast forward four months after the funerals, I went shopping with a friend and we bought some clothes. We loaded the trunk at the mall with five or six bags. We arrived at home, opened the trunk, and guess what was there? Perfectly centered on top of our bags, the blue bottle warmer plastic ring. My friend and my husband saw it too. I can't explain what happened. It couldn't have been stuck somewhere in the trunk and then just fell on the bags because I remember using it at the funeral home the morning that we lost it. And the car's trunk was made and the fact that we loaded and unloaded it at least 10 times since then. Also, it was perfectly centered on the bags like it was being presented to us. I don't know. What do you think? All 
right, so check this out. For the last week and a half, I've been noticing little things happening, but now it's starting to get to me. It started with watching videos or TV. I'll be watching with no buffering and strong Wi-Fi signals. You get it. And then whatever has been said on whatever I'm watching will repeat itself with no issue and then carry on. For example, I was watching a video and the girl on the video said, I don't know what's going on, but I don't like it. She took a deep breath and then said the exact same thing again, word for word, exactly as she had just did. When this first happened, I thought nothing of it, but then it started happening on my phone too. I started rewinding videos or restarting movies to see if it was uploaded that way accidentally, but they were all normal. I tried to brush it off, but a couple of days ago it started happening while I was talking to people. I would be talking to someone and then they would repeat what they said exactly the same as if they didn't just say it. At first, I would try to logic my way out of this weird occurrence happening while watching YouTube or Netflix, but now I don't know how to logic my way out of people speaking to me face to face. When I asked them why they said it again, they're adamant that they didn't. I've asked the people that I live with if they've been experiencing this too, but nobody has. I've started mouthing the end of sentences when it happens and the people that I'm talking to just look at me like I'm absolutely crazy. But to me, they literally just said and did the exact same thing only moments ago. And I have no idea what's going on. I randomly have these thoughts like, wait, I've seen me being in this situation before, or I've seen this already. It sounds like deja vu, but trust me, it isn't. It's sort of like deja vu, but I know what follows the moment I get the thought. All right, so here's the story, and it's a very short one at that. So I'm riding my bike to check up on my brother playing outside with the neighbor's kid. I get there, and I see that everything's fine. I turn around on my bike and I start cycling. Before I turn right, however, as I usually do, a thought instantly appears in my mind. Wait, I've seen this before. Stop your bike. And a car flies by me. You won't guess what car drove by. The exact car that I expected. A big, black Volvo SUV. After it drove past me, I was confused and processing what the heck had just happened. And that's the time that my deja vu literally saved my bones. And this is not the first time that this has happened to me either. Now, I've had a few glitches in the Matrix happen to me, so I must be getting close to escaping the Matrix. For example, here's something weird. I have a key hook that is second nature to hang my keys upon as soon as I get home from work. I work in pest control and this will come up again. They're always in the same spot, three hooks from the left. I'm a creature of habit and I never falter from this. On my way out to work, I go to grab my keys and they're not there. In a slight panic, I check the pockets of my pants and jacket and there's nothing. I tear through the whole house looking for my keys, even double checking the key hook several times in case I had what my wife calls husband brain. And this is where things are right in front of me and I still don't see it. But still, I don't see them. I call my wife who says that she's not seen my keys but maybe I left them out in the car that morning when I went to the gym. I was lucky enough to be able to use my mother-in-law's vehicle to go check my wife's van to find my keys. And on my way out the door, I look over, and there are my keys, hanging there. And my keys are the only thing on that key hook. Confused, I head out to work, and things begin to get even weirder from here. Some additional backstory is that being in pest control, we're in charge of all client relations, and this includes clients canceling service. A few months back, I had a client that had canceled service and didn't want preventative services, so 
I cancel her out, and I thanked her for being an awesome client. She even gave me a thank you card. I put a note in the account of the cancellation. The following month, I noticed that she was back on my schedule. Thinking that this is odd, I go to do the client's house, confused. Maybe she decided not to cancel after all, I recall thinking to myself. As I pulled up, I spoke with the client about how I was excited that they had decided to stay with us and that I would start preparing for the upcoming ant season. And now she was confused and she said that she didn't cancel the service. And I thought, okay, maybe I'm mistaken. So I treated the house as normal. When done, I looked in my sun visor where I keep all of my thank you cards and hers was gone. I guess it was just a weird dream. Fast forward 30 something days, I wake up and I can't find my keys again. I go through the whole rigmarole of looking everywhere and of course, they're back in the first place that I look, so off to work I go. The first stop that I make is the same client's house. I pull up and I wave and the client now looks confused. She says, I thought I canceled the service. I said, I thought so too, but when I saw you last month, you said that you didn't. I looked back at previous services and there was not a service done last month and the cancellation note was not in there. I get in my truck and I'm driving away confused. I again look in the sun visor and again I see no thank you card that she had given me. I know it all sounds weird and some may be thinking that it's the uh, chemicals that I use but I'm a big advocate on using personal protective equipment and I'm even on the safety committee and I push PPE heavily. All I can think is that that was a glitch in the matrix or some weird parallel universe shift. What do you think? Recently, I was at my aunt's house alone to use her pool. I was in the kitchen, pulled out a glass cup from the cabinet, and a spider jumped out at me. I dropped the cup and glass flew everywhere. I was barefoot, so I ran upstairs to grab a pair of shoes to clean up. First, I went into her guest room. She used to keep most of her shoes in there. I opened up the door and the bed was gone. I could see the outlines of where the bed used to be, you know, indented into the carpet. I closed the door and remember thinking, where the hell did it go and why did she get rid of it? Did she sell it? Why didn't she tell anyone about it or ask my boyfriend for help moving it? I thought it was weird. At the same time, my aunt had talked about wanting to move in the past, so I thought maybe she just sold it in very early preparation. I also thought maybe she was turning that room into something else. I had it in my head that I was going to text her and ask her as soon as I got back outside where my phone was. It took way longer than expected to pick up all of the glass. I was cleaning for at least 30 minutes. And when I was done... I tried going back outside and her cat tried to escape out the back door, so I basically had to tackle him to get him back inside. After all that, I completely forgot about the bed being gone. It wasn't until a few weeks later when I was over at her house again. I asked her what she did with her guest bed and she had no idea what I was talking about and said that the bed was still there. I walked upstairs and, yep. The bed was exactly where it used to be. No idea what happened that day. I was completely sober too. Hmm. I was on a long drive with my boyfriend down a long straight highway. Perfectly clear blue sky. Just a couple of wispy clouds in the air. I saw a plane flying and then suddenly disappear. And no, it didn't just get further away and out of sight, or go behind a cloud. It was flying in a straight line, fairly low, and close enough to be very visible. And it just disappeared. The best way I can describe it was if you were watching a play with the sky painted on a backdrop, and instead of someone going in front of the backdrop, they walked behind it and disappeared from sight. It was literally like the plane flew behind a wall in the sky, and disappeared. I freaked out and I told my boyfriend to keep an eye on the sky in case it happened again 
because I wanted him to confirm what I had just seen. Well, lo and behold, another plane did the exact same thing. And then another. At this point, we were wondering if it was the same planes reappearing from behind the wall because we saw this happen to maybe four or five different planes altogether. Now, I don't know crap about air traffic control, but I can't imagine there being that many planes so close together flying in different directions and then just disappearing completely, as if they disappeared, reappeared, and then disappeared again. There were no clouds in the way, and there was no logical explanation at all for it, and I've never seen anything like it before or since. Anyone ever seen anything like this before? I'll preface this with a little personal background. I was an all-state vocalist in New York and have done national and international competitions in NYC, Cincinnati, Toronto, DC, etc. That was a bit over 10 years ago and I've been using my voice for recreational singing daily ever since. But I've been sick with recurring pancreatitis for around six months now, and this is when things started getting a lot more strange for me. I was in the hospital first for five days, and then I was okay for three months before my next round with the beast. The second time in early February, I was admitted due to extreme pain and not being able to keep water down. Things were very askew because I was being pumped full of drugs for the pain since that's all they can really do. 11 out of 10 pain for sure. Anyway, after 5 days in the hospital this time, I wasn't feeling well when I got home. I was heavy into withdrawal and was not okay for about 5 more days. I got better though, and when I did, I didn't notice anything odd. I was going back to work and on my first day back was struck again with the same pain. I knew it was starting over again and I ended up back in the hospital for four more days. Now, that was three attacks in as many months. My whole life has changed. My diet, my attitude, etc. due to needing to adjust for my condition. But things started to stick out for me that were different now. Most notably, my voice has gotten deeper. It seems weird and it wouldn't be too noticeable if you weren't me, but being so intimately in tune with my voice through my whole life, I could tell the next morning when I woke up from my last stay. Before that, I was on pain medication that were sickeningly strong constantly. The doctor said to me, sort of jokingly I guess, that the nurses here had a tendency to stop people's breathing. I'm pretty sure it's because they're liberal with dosing regardless. Second, my best friend of 28 years called back to something that I don't remember. Three times so far. And then I have one memory that he doesn't have. Third, before I went in the first time, during a work meeting we were told about how the unpaid time off we got would be changing. Two months after the first happening in January, I needed to take two hours off one of the days and needed to let the boss know so he could adjust the PTO according to the new policy. He said he didn't know what I meant and that, no, I wouldn't lose a whole day for taking the time off. We got three days where if we missed any time it would count as one of those days and you could just stay home at that point, but it was only for three for the year and as the first one of the year. I asked him what he meant and recalled the meeting and he had no recollection of the policy or the meeting. I've asked the only co-worker I work with directly and he doesn't seem to remember either. So that's it so far, but I'll keep everyone updated if anything else comes up. Alright, so check this out. Let me begin by saying I was born in 1998. So this is by far the weirdest experience I've ever had. Anyway, I'm not much of a dreamer, but when I do dream, it's usually very lucid and memorable. So I had a dream that my mother was alone in an old, really poor looking house with my newborn sister and was waiting for my dad to get home. 
It was dark out, and my mother was anxious, waiting at the door, hoping that my father would show up soon. The house was a one-room structure with only four or five candles illuminating it. I was casually talking to my mother, saying it's all okay, and just reassuring her that everything would be okay. Suddenly, my mother looked at me and was thanking me for being with her while she was alone and for protecting her. Then, next thing I know, I wake up. I thought it was an odd dream, but I didn't think much of it after I showered and went off to work. Fast forward three days. It's a Friday night, and my parents and I are outside in my front yard, sitting around a fire, just chatting. And my parents began to joke about how my mother used to pop my father's bike tires when they lived in Mexico. My parents are Mexican and came to the U.S. in 95. I ask, what's the story behind that? And they begin to explain to me that back when my sister was born in 91, they lived in an old shack in a poor part of a small town in Mexico for about a year. My father had the habit of going out on his bike with his friends to drink and not coming home until the next morning, so my mother would pop the tires on his bike so he wouldn't leave. I laughed and didn't think much else until they continued on about it. My mother said she'd be terrified of being home alone in the tiny house because they lived in an alley known as El Callejón de la Llorona, which translates to Alley of the Weeping Woman. For those unfamiliar, the Weeping Woman is an urban legend in Mexico about a ghost woman who roams areas of Mexico and even parts of the U.S. weeping for her missing kids. So, naturally, an alley named after the ghost is going to be terrifying. My mother continued on, saying how terrified she was in that house alone and would wait, praying for my father to come home. My father then made a joke, saying something along the lines of, Why did you want me there? You claimed your guardian angel was protecting you. At this point, I thought, okay, what the F? So I asked my mom more, and she told me that she one night was visited by a man who seemingly came out of the wall, but she felt comfort and familiarity around him. He sat and spoke to her, reassuring her that it's going to be okay, before the man seemingly walked back into the wall. My mother said that after this, she felt a strong calmness around and was no longer afraid of being there. This tripped me out, considering I was born in 98, and I had never heard a thing about my mother's story until after I had that dream. I'm not sure if it's just a coincidence or if it's something more complex. In 1993, I was 17 and attended Lollapalooza in Orlando, Florida. I wore black jeans, black military surplus jump boots, and a black ministry t-shirt from their Psalm 69 tour the year prior, which I also saw in Orlando. It's not the most unique outfit at the festival, but this part will become important later in the story. Here's a picture on the screen of what I was wearing. Primus was the headliner that year. During their set, while I was having a blast circle moshing around in the pit, I accidentally shoulder checked this guy pretty hard. Back then, mosh pits seemed much friendlier than they are today. Impacting with others, while expected and unavoidable, was never meant to harm anyone. Whenever you did accidentally run into someone too hard or someone got knocked down, it was just common courtesy to help them up and to make sure they're okay. So I accidentally shoulder checked this guy and immediately spun around to make sure he was good. And in that instant, it felt like time started to slow down. As I spun around to see him, he too spun around to see me. And when we made eye contact, it felt like everything stopped for a moment. I was looking at myself. Not only did we look the same, we were wearing the exact same clothing that even appeared to be in the same condition. Our shirts were equally faded, you know, things like that. The only detail that struck me as being any different was it seemed as if my hair was slightly longer than his, maybe by an inch or two at the most. 
as if mine had been growing for a few months longer than his. The frozen moment lasted for what seemed like just a second or two, and then time seemed to abruptly return, and the crowd swallowed us back up. I didn't see him again, and I remember thinking that it felt odd in the moment, but I must have wrote it off. I was likely easily distracted by the music, the lights, the people, and everything else happening around me. In hindsight, this is always the hardest part of the memory for me to reconcile with. It seems like if something like that happened today, I would stop everything and investigate. But the best I can figure is that I just rationalized it away as a dumb, distracted teen. After all, it could have just been some other guy wearing the same clothes, right? After Primus was over, I was leaving the concert fairgrounds to head back to my car with my friend, whom I had driven there. Someone laying on a blanket nearby started yelling at us as we walked by. The guy got up, he ran over, and started walking alongside us, asking us stuff about where we were going, when we were going to meet so-and-so, etc. My friend and I had no idea who this dude was, and had dealt with our fair share of stone weirdos, so we just ignored him. When he realized we weren't stopping, he sprinted ahead of me and placed both of his hands on my shoulders to physically stop me from moving. He started addressing me by the wrong name and was confused as to why I was acting this way. I knocked his hands off me, told him to back off, and my friend and I kept walking to my car, leaving him standing there, staring at me with a shocked expression. At the time, we laughed it off, like, man, what was wrong with that guy? But the next day, everything started to make sense once I chatted online with another friend who attended the same festival. This other friend was someone that I've known for years but wasn't very close with. He was the level of friend where I knew he was at the same show but I didn't expend any energy looking for him or making plans to meet up or anything like that. He initiated the chat and asked if he had done something to piss me off I had no idea what he was talking about, so he told me this anecdote. He was watching some band at the festival when this crowd surfing guy got past his way and fell down in front of him. He helped him up and realized it was me. He greeted me and tried to give me a hug, but I shoved him away. I cursed at him and then I stormed off. He was left completely baffled why I would have acted that way when he thought we were cool. There were two huge problems with this anecdote. One, I never crowd surfed, ever. And two, at the time this happened, I was with my friend watching a different band at a different stage. What's fascinating is that both my friend during the crowd surfing incident and my doppelganger's friend from the blanket incident were close enough to each of us to make physical contact and look us squarely in the eyes, yet they both mistook us for one another. The author has included an edit. He says, Let me preemptively say, I was not on drugs. I wasn't drinking alcohol. I have no history of mental illness, nor does it run in my family. And nothing like this has ever happened to me again. This story happened to my parents sometime between 1994 and 1997. One hot summer day, my parents decided they wanted to go to the local drive-in to catch a movie. They called their friends, it was a couple that I'll call Martin and Jessica, to see if they wanted to come along. They said they would love to go, so my parents left to go pick them up. On their way to pick up Martin and Jessica, my parents spotted a man on a street corner. He was dressed in a long black trench coat, black pants, black boots, and a black fedora type of hat. This was very odd, considering it was easily the hottest day of the summer, and most people in the area were walking around shirtless or with t-shirt and a shorts. He was staring at my parents in their car with an expression my mother could only describe as evil. He was smiling in an alarming way, and his head followed the car as they passed by. 
Out of all the cars driving by, he decided to stare at my parents and followed the car with his gaze. My parents thought it was very odd, as he was just focusing on them and no one else. And due to the way he was dressed, also no one else who happened to be walking on the same sidewalk as the man seemed to notice him. It just came off as bizarre. My parents arrived at Martin and Jessica's house and picked them up. They told them about the man, joking that he was probably some drug dealer or homeless person, as he seemed very out of place in the rural area. So, now they're on their way to the drive-in. To get to our local drive-in, you have to pass through the downtown area of my city and turn off into a highway that takes you to the local university. The drive-in is on the side of said highway before you reach the university. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, as they turn into the downtown area, they notice the same man wearing the same clothes, having that same evil smile, and staring at them and no other car again. My parents tell Martin and Jessica that it's the man that they saw earlier, and everyone gets a little creeped out. There's no way he could have walked that far from when they first saw him. But my parents did stop to pick up Martin and Jessica, so he could have gotten a cab to where he was now standing downtown. They keep driving and turn down a street about 30 seconds after they see him, and when they turn the corner down the street, there he is. The same man, same grin, still focused on just my parents. Everyone starts freaking out because it's impossible for him to be there. They just passed him, not even a minute earlier. And they all agree that something's not right, but they still decide to keep going. They pass by the local Cineplex and see him standing by an intersection now. They can't believe their eyes because there he is again, 45 seconds after seeing him on the same road. Martin and Jessica watch from the back seat of the car to make sure that he's still there, which he is. They decide to keep an eye on him to make sure he isn't getting picked up by anyone and somehow being dropped off in different locations at an unbelievable speed. Just as my parents' car is driving up the hill, which leads to the turnoff onto the highway, the man finally fades from Martin and Jessica's sight and they turn back around. When the car reaches the top of the hill, the man is standing on the sidewalk, just staring and smiling. Everyone starts screaming, and they turn the car around and speed back to Martin and Jessica's house. To this day, the story still freaks them out, and they have no idea who or what he was. They never saw that man again. Do you have any idea of what or who that could have been? This happened in November of 1993, shortly after my 14th birthday. My parents were divorced, and it was my weekend to spend with my father. He called me up Friday after school, apologizing and saying that he wasn't feeling well. Said he had flu-like symptoms and really needed to rest, and he couldn't spend time with me that weekend. I was disappointed, but I still understood. Dad and I were close. I now had an entire weekend ahead of me with no plans, so I pretty much just lounged around Friday night, and Saturday, I made arrangements to spend the night with a friend. We stayed up late doing what adolescent boys did in the 90s, sharing a beer we stole from the fridge and playing Tecmo Bowl on Nintendo. We finally went to bed, and I slept on the couch. For a couch, it was pretty comfy, and I slept well enough. For no reason that I was aware of at the time, I woke up just as it was starting to get light. Nobody else was up yet, and while it wasn't like I shot up out of bed, I do remember I was wide awake and completely aware. I looked at my watch. It was 8.20 a.m. Too early to get up. Before going back to sleep, I had one thought. I wonder how Dad's feeling. I'll have to give him a call after I get up. The next thing I remember is my mother waking me up and telling me that we had to go. There was a feeling in the whole house that something was very wrong. 
We went out to the car and we got in. Mom got in the back seat with me, which was very odd. She put her arm around me and said, son, your dad's dead. I don't remember much else of the ride to grandma's house, which is where dad had been living since the divorce or the rest of the morning for that matter. His body was still in the house when we arrived and it's a vision that will stay with me forever. But here's the weird part. Myself, my mother, my stepdad, my brother and my grandma, even the freaking coroner are all sitting at the dinner table. The coroner needed a time of death for the death certificate and after going over the events of the morning, they decided he must have passed at about 8.20 a.m. Coincidence? Maybe. Was dad trying to contact me somehow? I don't know. It didn't feel like that, but I do believe completely that I somehow felt his passing, though I didn't realize it at the time. For those interested, my dad died of a massive heart attack that morning. Flu-like symptoms are common, and he didn't tell anyone how sick he really was, but we all think that he knew. I was on the phone with my mother earlier and we spoke of something that happened when I was a kid that I thought you guys might enjoy. My parents bought their first house in Canada in the fall of 1980, five years before I was born. My mom has a habit of taking off her rings every night before she goes to bed, leaving them on her nightstand. And one night, in the first few weeks that she had lived in that house, she did just that. She took off her wedding ring, her engagement ring, and the other ring that she wore all the time, which was 18 karat gold with a large aquamarine, a gift her parents got her when my older brother was born. The next day, she wakes up and her engagement ring and wedding band are on the nightstand, but not the aquamarine ring. She searched for it. She moved the nightstand in case it fell behind. She checked under the bed and even checked the drawers, and it was nowhere to be found. She then figured she must have lost it somewhere. Obviously, she was upset over it since it had sentimental value to her. Fast forward to 1995. I'm now 10 years old at that point, and I had never seen or even heard of that ring until then. My mom was having an asthma attack, and she asked me to get her inhaler, which was on that nightstand. I run to get it for her, and I notice the ring right next to it. I bring my mom her inhaler and once her asthma attack was gone, I told her that I saw her new ring and that it looked really pretty. She was very confused and asked me what I was talking about and I tell her that I saw a gold ring with a large light blue gem on it. She walked to her bedroom and broke down in tears. I had no clue what was going on until she told me the whole story and to this day, we can't explain what happened. Okay, I've been sitting on this story since the 90s when it happened. Here's a little bit of background. At the time, I was about 23 years old. I shared a home with my then husband, my sister, and my two young kids. And this was about 1994. One thing you should know is that throughout my entire life, things have just gone missing around me. As inexplicable as those events were, I always just pinned it on me being klutzy, unattentive, or forgetful. Anyways, when we moved into this place, the missing stuff went into complete overdrive. It was making me feel insane. I was at a point in my life where I didn't want to accept it as one of those things anymore. It just wasn't a reasonable explanation, and stuff was going missing constantly, pretty much daily. I'd make up explanations in my head, no matter how unlikely the explanation was. Okay, maybe my two-year-old got out of bed, silently came down the stairs, made it past everyone in the living room without being seen, went into the kitchen, silently made it onto the counter, grabbed my lost item, and then did the whole thing in reverse. Maybe. And then a week later, replicated it, but this time he put the item back. I mean... 
honestly, very unlikely. But what other explanation is there? So here's the event. It's a weekday. My sister went to work. My shift working husband is taking the kids out of town to visit his family. And I'm taking the day to get some child-free errands done. I got everyone out the door, had a coffee, read the newspaper in peace, and then started gathering my items for my errands. I put my keys on the coffee table while I went to the kitchen to put my cup in the sink. Note that because I had a two-year-old, there was nothing else on the coffee table. We kept it bare as much as possible. I come back into the living room and the keys aren't there. Okay, okay, this is ridiculous. I retrace my steps. Maybe I absently picked them up again? But no, the kitchen counter is bare. Okay, maybe it's inside my coat that I had put down. Still no. I'll fast forward through much of the next 45 minutes. I will say that I had the idea that maybe my losing stuff was due to a brain tumor or something. Like maybe the items really were there and for some reason I just wasn't seeing them. Which led me to sweeping my arms across the coffee table at least a dozen times and turning it on its side at least three more times. I looked at every place I could think of. In kitchen cupboards, in the bathroom that I hadn't even used that day yet, in the upstairs bathroom that I definitely hadn't even used yet, in the sink, which was empty besides one cup, I even looked under the sofa, which I lifted up. I was running out of places to look. I finally thought, fine, you know what? I have gone insane. Maybe I never had the keys. Maybe my husband accidentally took them. Whatever, I'm not doing any errands today. I decided I'm done. I dejectedly walked back into the living room on the middle of the otherwise bare coffee table were my keys. That was one of two incidents that I absolutely could not explain, no matter how unlikely. This was a small town house, very small, limited ways in and out. And I was definitely alone in the house. And for the record, my things still disappear. Nowadays, I just shrug. I am not playing hide and seek anymore, universe. It was the summer of 1990, and I was with two friends, D and S, walking through London from Camden Town back down along Camden High Street towards the center of the city. We stopped to wait at a pedestrian crossing for the lights to change. The standard British Pelican Crossing is a plain red silhouette of a man standing still. As usual, when waiting for the lights to change, we all watched them impatiently. Eventually, they did change to the normal British green man mid-stride, and we started crossing. As we walked, we kept an eye on the lights to make sure we had enough time to make it across comfortably. About halfway across the road, there was, quite literally, a ripple in reality. A brief flash of disturbance, and suddenly the lights had changed again, but not back to red. The plain green guy was now wearing wide-bottomed flares and glasses. He had long, flowing hair cascading out behind him and had a line of stars from in front of his forehead that trailed over his head and down his back, each one slightly bigger than the previous, like some kind of cloak. We all stopped dead and exchanged stunned looks. One of us, I forget which, said, Did you... And the other two both replied, yes, before he could even finish the sentence. Then we remembered the traffic and hurried across the road and waited nervously for the lights to go red again. Sure enough, on both sides of the road, the red guy had changed as well. He was now carrying a briefcase, smoking a pipe with wisps of smoke rising, wearing a little Hamburg hat, and he had big brogues on his feet. We watched the light cycle for about 10 minutes or so, but eventually continued on, feeling extremely freaked out. A couple of days later, I was talking about it with a group of friends. To my amazement, one of the girls said, Oh yeah, I heard about that. I muttered something incredulous, and she told me that she'd seen an article in the press 
talking about how the council had recently changed the lights on that pedestrian crossing. Apparently, it was some sort of tribute about the death of a singer who had been famous in the 60s and who had lived on that street. She was certain that the three of us there had just not noticed the difference in lights until we were halfway across the road. But I was far from convinced. The council changing the plates over the lights made sense, but not in less than the blink of an eye. Anyway, L promised to bring me the article to have a look at at our next gathering a couple of weeks later. However, just a few days later, I went back to Camden to look at the changed lights more closely. The construction was standard. They were just black painted glass, the top section red glass and the bottom section green with the shapes of the men etched out of the paint with white bulbs behind. The figures were based on the original templates of the walk slash go men, but with extra details etched out of the black paint to provide the outfits. The glass was bolted in and took up the entire casing in front of the light bulbs. There was no possible mechanism by which they could have slid down in front of the other plates or anything of that sort. Just in case, I hung around at a cafe across the road for about an hour watching the lights, but they stayed changed. And about a week after that, I went back again for another look to get a sketch of the altered designs. I was disappointed to find that the lights were back to being perfectly normal. It was our regular gathering a couple of days later, and I was quite keen to see the article that L had mentioned. When I asked her if she had brought it in, however, she looked at me blankly. She clearly didn't have the slightest idea what I was talking about. She didn't remember me mentioning anything about traffic lights, Camden, or anything else, and neither did any of the others there. She had never heard anything about the council changing some pedestrian crossing lights, or even of a singer from the 60s dying recently. In fact, none of them remembered me saying anything much at our previous gathering. When I retold the story, everyone seemed quite spooked by it all. I called D and S immediately afterwards, and yes, they still remembered it, clearly. D seemed amused by it all, and S was just terrified. The only explanation that I can even begin to stand up to Occam is that we briefly swapped into a closely aligned parallel dimension. If the other two hadn't been there, I doubt I'd trust my own memory of the event. It was so surreal. But as it happens, I've since had a couple of other experiences that also look a little like some minor dimensional swapping, although they're less dramatic. I'm 25, and this is something that's been happening to me from what I've been told ever since I could speak coherently. Some of the incidences I remember personally, and some I was made aware of by my mother when it happened again more recently. I come from a big family, and we've all been close, going back to my great-grandparents' generation. My mother's parents both passed before I was born, but she has piles of old photo books and hours of stories about them, so I still felt as if I knew them myself. I tell you all of this as a precursor to the most recent example of this weird occurrence. With my grandma's birthday on my mom's side just passing this week, I sat down with my mother to look through some old photo albums. As we flipped through the pages, she pointed out photos and shared stories, ones that I've heard a million times before, but it makes her happy, so I let her go on. As she turns to the next page, I see a picture of my Uncle Kenny wearing a large Stetson hat, aviator sunglasses, and a white button-down shirt. I pointed to the picture, I frowned, and I said, that's the day he crashed his cutlass. I feel so bad for him still about Shadow. I felt my mom's eyes on me and lifted my head to her looking at me with a puzzled expression. She pointed to the date at the bottom of the photo. It was June 12, 1983, and I wasn't born until 1995. 
I hadn't remembered my uncle ever talking about the car, and my mom said she wasn't sure that he had ever driven one, and neither of us had any idea who Shadow was, so we called him to find out. He answered, and my mom asked about the car. He seemed confused, but confirmed that yes, he had owned a Cutlass Supreme, brand new in 83, and recalled how upset he was having crashed it only six months later. My mother asks nothing else, and he goes on to say, it was even worse because I lost Shadow that same day. My mom tells him what I said about the photo and asks him to explain a little more. He had been driving with Shadow in the passenger seat, window open, when he was T-boned by someone who ran a stop sign. Unfortunately, Shadow was ejected through the open window and he didn't make it. After we hung up, my mom just looked at me funny for a moment and walked away. How did I remember something that happened 12 years before I was born and was never told about previously? Hmm. I have two stories that I've decided to post. Um, the first one happened in 1993. I was living in New York City and had to take the subway to downtown Manhattan. After getting off the subway, as I was walking to work, I felt overwhelmed by my surroundings. The loud noises, the foul odor, and the huge number of homeless made me long for the small town that I grew up in. Please understand that I am very sympathetic to the plight of the homeless. As my mother always said, there but for the grace of God go I. That morning, however, I really just felt submerged by the hopelessness of those around me. For some reason, I said to myself, this is just like Tijuana. I have no clue why I said that, as I've never been to Tijuana and that's not an expression that I've used before or since that morning. I have been to Mexico since then, and I had a delightful time, but never been to Tijuana. I have no idea what it's even like. I would describe it as a random and bizarre thought. After I said that to myself, I thought, where did that even come from? Again, I didn't say this out loud, I said it in my head. I walked maybe ten more steps, and I saw a man approaching me. My first guess was that he was homeless. When he was about three or four feet from me, he inclined his head towards me, looked me straight in the eyes, and said, Hey, 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 welcome to Tijuana. I was shocked. I knew that I had not said that out loud, and after he said that, we both just kept walking in opposite directions. Unlike everybody else that morning, he was exceptionally happy and seemed to be having great fun. Honestly, I felt like he had just read my mind. It was very disconcerting. I did turn around and look at him while I was walking in the opposite direction, and he was still there, walking away. It was all very bizarre. Here's the second story I'd like to post. Last year, my family and I were very stressed as my mother was living in an assisted living facility and she was failing. She has since passed away. My sister was especially taking the brunt of it as she was visiting my mother weekly while working a very intense job. Around 8 o'clock in the evening, I felt the air beside me shift and I heard a huge crackle. It almost sounded like electricity. At the same moment, or so it seemed, I heard my sister say my name very intensely and almost angrily. I was shocked, and I looked around expecting to see her. We live in two separate states, and sadly, we're about 12 hours apart. I wish we lived closer. I didn't call my sister that night because I was afraid she might already be asleep as she gets up so early in the mornings. I did speak to her in the next evening, though, and I told her what had happened, and she told me that our mother told her earlier in the day before I called that she had also heard her call out to her as well. My sister wasn't mad at me, but I think the intensity of the situation and her stress load somehow came across when she said my name.
About three years ago, I worked at a pizzeria where I carried out varied tasks depending on the needs. This evening, I was in charge of deliveries. A couple and their two children, who were regular customers, ordered by phone and came to pick up their order at the restaurant. Usually, they opted for delivery, but this wasn't the first time that they had come to pick it up. As they left, I walked past them. A few minutes later, we realized that they were missing an item. We tried calling them, but there was no answer. As they were loyal customers and I had a delivery nearby their address, I decided to drop off the missing item myself. However, when I arrived at their building, something just, I don't know, seemed off. They lived on the ground floor of a small building, and their yard was usually filled with children's toys, but this day it was empty. I rang the intercom, and through the glass door of the building, I saw an elderly woman opening the door of the flat and coming to me. She told me that she had lived there for years, and there was no family living there. Confused, I went back to my car and a video called my colleague to make sure I wasn't going crazy. She became puzzled, as I had just been, and confirmed that I was at the correct address. This would have been surprising otherwise, as I had delivered to them several times before and was very familiar with the neighborhood. I tried calling the customers again, but still no answer. Eventually, I had to move on, because I was running out of time. About two weeks later, they reordered as if nothing happened. I made the delivery and everything seemed back to normal. And of course, I told them about the strange events. They were just as confused as I was and also had no explanation since they of course didn't move, didn't have any elderly women living with them. And moreover, they were certain that they had gone straight home after picking up their order. Since these events, we refer to them as the ghost family. This strange incident happened about 20 years ago when I was 18 and still in high school. For some context, I'm from Germany and our school system is divided into three different types after elementary school ends with fourth grade. Gymnasium, and no, it's not a sports school, is the school type where you go to university after graduating. In the last two years of gymnasium, we choose two main subjects we focus on and, in the end, write our graduation exam in it. We also have all other subjects, but just not as thoroughly. One of my subjects was German. The classes are normally smaller with around 15 students, max, and our teacher stays with us for two years, prepping us for graduation on this particular subject. All students in our German class got along very well with each other, they're all about 18 or 19, and we also liked our teacher, who was about a 35-year-old female, quite a lot, and she liked us too. It was always very friendly, calm, relaxed, almost like a familial atmosphere in our class, so we decided to go on something like a weekend trip to a hostel about a month before graduation exam to repeat all the topics from the last two years to prepare for maybe some upcoming questions or topics in the exams and really just strengthen our knowledge in the subject. It's not a common thing to do, these trips. We just did it because, like I said, We studied in a very familial atmosphere and thought it would be something like a little goodbye since school would soon be over. There was no pressure. Who wanted to go went and who didn't want simply didn't. Since we were all still high schoolers, the hostel wasn't far away from our hometown. It's about an hour away or maybe less. And of course, not high class, just (laughs) average. I can't remember so well anymore, but it was somewhere located in a smaller village. The hostel itself was isolated and surrounded by some woods. All fine for a hostel since people mostly use it as sleepovers when they go hiking or they book rooms for seminars for a group. Because we wanted to save money, 
All the females slept together in one room, including our teacher. Everyone was fine with it. I don't know how it would be perceived today, but at the time, it wasn't a big deal. We weren't minors, and it was just one night. It was a bit crowded, but hey, it is what it is. And I can't recall any more, but I think there were five or six people in that room. One of them was my best friend at the time. Some of the beds were that kind that you can fold, and you can also stroll them in from other rooms if needed. All of them were quite close to each other, and there wasn't a lot of room to walk around after we got all the beds in. All the beds were sheeted by us when we went to sleep in the evening, and all was fine. The night was calm, and I remember that I slept perfectly fine. Normally, I'm an early bird, but when I woke up, it wasn't dark anymore, so the room was dim because the curtains were pulled in front of the windows. It seemed like the others were still asleep, at least everyone was still laying in their beds, not moving. There were no smartphones with internet yet, so there was no chance someone was just doom scrolling. Since I needed to use the restroom, I silently left the room, not wanting to wake the others. Now, it's common, and was common, that there were no toilets or showers in the room. They were located outside in the hallway. I came back, and some of the others were already awake, sitting on their beds, maybe a bit groggy. Silently admitting it's always a bit weird waking up with others, we all just said good morning and that was it for our first interaction of the day. Everyone was minding their own business. And then I saw that extremely weird, almost black or dark brown and red isolated circular spot on the ground between me and my bestie's bed. I was puzzled and I couldn't tell the exact diameter, but I would say it was around five or seven centimeters. It wasn't big, but it also wasn't so small that I wouldn't have seen it the evening before we went to sleep. It was shiny, not crusted either, which means it wasn't something dry. I didn't touch it, but it looked thick. You couldn't see through it and there were no crumbs or grains or anything chunky inside. It just looked purely liquid. And then the floor was, I don't know, gray or something, so there was a strong difference in colors. And that's also why I spotted it so quick. The strangest thing about it was its very circular shape. There was no smearing, no other stains nearby, or like when you drop honey on an even surface, there were no droplets next to it. But this wasn't honey, for sure. Honestly, at that time, it looked to me like it appeared out of the floor. No drops, no nothing. You know, like when you see a movie when blood is oozing out of a wooden floor through that thin spare? It's kind of like that. Just that our floor was linoleum, and there was no way that it could ooze out from the floor because there were no gaps. I told my bestie, and she was puzzled as well. Then we told the others. Everyone was looking at it and was getting weirded out. Our teacher included. The way she looked at us was like she was searching for an answer as to maybe who did it or who would know where it came from. Then I looked up at the ceiling, wondering if something was dripping from there, but again, there were no droplets, which you would assume when liquid falls down. And there was also no stain on the ceiling either. The whole ceiling was clean. My second guess was, well, with several females in a room, Maybe one was on her period. I thought it might have been my bestie because the stain was right between her bed and mine and I wasn't on my period. I thought, come on, it can happen. No drama. But then I was wondering, even if it was that, how the heck would it be so isolated and so clean with no stains around it or anything? And it was really very thick. It was dark. And I don't think anybody just walking around would leave that. It was just impossible to leave something like that without any other stains next to it or around it. Also, cups weren't things at the time, so it wasn't possible that some just emptied there, and even then, why? 
If it had been a nosebleed, I guess there would have been some smaller droplets and someone admitting it, but there's really no issue to try to hide here. There was nothing embarrassing about that or any other little injury. Everyone was fine. I wondered if some smaller animal, a mouse or so, got injured somehow and left the stain there, but then again, in that case, there would have to be some smears of blood around it. I mean, that injured animal would have to have needed to go somewhere. All of us were puzzled, and since I'm rather on the rational side, my assumption was just menstrual blood, even if it technically was also irrational to even have that thought. But somehow, this was the only rational explanation to me. But everyone, of course, denied having anything to do with the stain. Also, this sounds rational to me because the spot was just also extremely weird, and I believed them. That spot made no sense. We also checked the floor for other stains or smearing or drops, and also we checked under the bed, but there was just that one stain. I think, in the end, our teacher was the one cleaning it up with a handkerchief. The floor was fine, with no damage, no holes, or anything beneath the stain. So, it didn't come from above, and it didn't come from below. It was like it just appeared out of nothing. That strange, blood-like spot. I say blood-like because I can't confirm, of course, that it was blood. I just didn't, and still don't know what could look like that except for blood. Very dark blood. Also, it didn't look like juice or jam or any other kind of food or beverage. There was also no strange smell coming from it either. Or maybe we just got rid of it quick enough. I can't tell. I don't think it was a prank. Neither the girls nor the boys were that kind of person that would ever try to dare to silently enter our female room with our teacher inside. And as I said, I'm rather the rational type and would love to give an answer for that strange spot, but I simply can't. There is probably a simple answer to it. At least, I hope so. This is a story of my online stalker, and for the sake of privacy, I'll be changing the names of the people involved. It all started about a year ago when I met Jerry through some mutual friends of ours, and by all accounts, he seemed pretty cool. We clicked almost immediately and became fast friends and enjoyed hanging out on social media. I remember the countless hours of time that we and our friends spent on Discord and voice chat, and for the majority of the time it was fun and everyone got along fine. There was never any indication of him being vindictive towards us. Even to this day, I don't know what really happened to trigger his behavior, because one day everything seemed to be fine. Hell, we even got together with a friend of ours and started writing a fan fiction for a mutual friend. But the very next day, it was like something just snapped in him. It was like he became a separate person, not the same one that we had all known. That would be the day that would change my life and make me, in certain ways, a very different person. Every day for six weeks, he would stalk, bully, and harass me. Even going as far as to threaten to kill me, two of my friends, and our families. Jerry's behavior would push me to my breaking point. I wasn't the only one that he went after either. In total, there were five of us, but... Even to this day, his obsession with me still hasn't stopped. Thank God I didn't and don't have to go through this alone. And if it wasn't for the amazing love and support of my friends, I would have deleted everything and just disappeared. I never thought in a million years that I would become the target of an online stalker and have to live with the drama and the uncertainty of what could or couldn't have happened. So please, if you suspect someone you know is being stalked and bullied on the internet, don't just assume it's nothing. Try and help the person with the situation. Your love and support can make a difference in someone's immortality.
This is a simple story, but it's true and it happened to me. A few years ago, I was 30 years old and my grandmother had just died. My mother, my aunt, and I were staying in my grandmother's home in suburban Atlanta, making funeral arrangements and caring for her home in the immediate aftermath of her death. It was, I believe, the night after the day she died and we had all gone to bed. Each of us had our own bedrooms on the second floor of the house. I was close to falling asleep when I distinctly heard two voices speaking. It sounded like two people were talking downstairs. One voice was more easy to make out as a woman, but the other, I'm not sure. They were having a conversation at a normal volume, but I couldn't make out anything that was being said. It was just murmuring. Strangely, I wasn't bothered by this at all. I was completely calm, and I eventually fell asleep. The next morning, I woke up, and I had forgotten all about it. Later that afternoon, my mother, my aunt, and I were driving somewhere. We were all silent until, all of a sudden, my very reserved and pragmatic aunt said only, I heard people talking in the house last night. It was only then that I remembered. I told her that I had heard them too. My mother, whose bedroom was right next to mine, however, didn't hear them. We didn't say much more about it. I think it made my aunt very uncomfortable and I didn't want to press her right after her mom died. We never talked about it again and my aunt herself died this year, unfortunately. I've thought about this occurrence more and more lately. There's just no way that it could have been actual people speaking. Her house was set back from the road in a quiet neighborhood. Now, what I really can't understand is why I wasn't scared when it happened. It's so bizarre. Also, if my aunt hadn't said anything, I don't think I would have remembered at all, even though now I can remember it clearly. I've never had anything happen like that before or after. When I was a kid, about seven years old, I remember me and my sister were playing at some playground park, maybe around like 8 p.m. or 9 or so. My mom used to love to go out with her friend to random places just to gossip, so yeah, I don't know. Anyway, as the night wore on, I noticed something dark with a cloak on immersing out of complete darkness. It came from basically the desert as I used to live in a small town near Death Valley. As I was studying it, it looked and moved just like the Reaper. It even had the same satchel thing and it didn't seem to be interested in me or anyone. It just walked in a straight line, almost floating. I told my sister and we ran away. This was the first time I've seen this being and the second time I saw it was when I moved with my father far away from any desert. My father is a born-again Christian, and he was even a certified pastor for many years, and he had his own church. Well, one day, I remember him and his friend were practicing music for the church, which I pleasantly sat and listened to, when all of a sudden, I felt something was watching me. So I sat in the corner of the living room and I had a clear view of a door that used to be the entrance to a room we had in the far back. As I looked up, I automatically noticed that the middle of the curtain that we used to have on the door was being lifted up as if someone was behind there holding it. I stared for what seemed like an eternity as I was confused because no one was back there and I couldn't see anything but what seemed just like pure darkness with a slight round outline of a head. After a few seconds, it dropped and I rushed to go investigate, yet nothing was back there. Fast forward to present time, just a couple of days ago, I had two dreams back to back of this dark cloaked entity stalking me in a strange house. I forgot what the dream was about, I just remember seeing the demonic being and thinking, Ah, 
you again. The morning I woke up from the second dream, I swear, I saw this dark, cloaked entity standing beside my bed, staring at me, and he disappeared almost immediately. I have no clue who this demon is, and I don't know why it's so attached to me, and it's obviously following me, and has been since I've been a kid up until now. I don't know what its purpose is, I am just very confused. I would like to know if anybody out there has ever encountered this dark cloaked spirit, and if so, what was your experience like? It's the mid-1990s on a rural road in South Mississippi. It was springtime, just a few months before we were supposed to graduate high school and leave everything we knew behind. My best friend's dad owned a used car dealership. The previous week, we had gotten a small, sporty Mazda convertible. His dad liked to give his new cars a week or so of running around to make sure he wasn't selling any lemons, so he gave us the keys and sent us off to give it a test drive around the rural back roads of the Pine Belt with heartfelt promises from both of us that we would be safe and definitely not speed or drive irresponsibly, a promise we kept to the next intersection before zooming out of sight. We had been driving around for about an hour before coming back to this one section of two-lane highway that ran through a floodplain for a small muddy water creek. The road was on an embankment so it wouldn't flood every time it rained so there was a steep 15-foot high drop-off on either side of the road. I mean, there's no pulling over to the side of the road if you were to break down on this section of roadway. The stretch that we were on was straight, but had a small hill that crested at about the halfway mark of this half-mile or so of asphalt. We had been enjoying our freedom and broken promises to his dad, and this particular moment was no different. We quickly ran up to a car that was very likely going the speed limit, but they were driving way too slow for us and that little Mazda. My friend and I looked at each other with a grin. He downshifted and gave it plenty of gas, eager to leave the slower car in our dust. As we crested the hill, a blur of metal appeared in our lane, barreling towards us at an alarming speed. We weren't even a hundred feet from the other car coming straight at us. I distinctly remember the driver in that car bracing himself, his eyes wide, knowing his options for avoiding a collision were zero to none. My best friend and I both yelled, oh shit, in unison as I squeezed my eyes shut, bracing for the inevitable collision. There's no way that we could have missed that car. I saw the driver's eyes, he was so close, impact was inevitable, except the sickening explosion of metal crunching against metal at high speed never came. I opened my eyes and I looked to my left. I saw my friend's arm nonchalantly resting on the door, his mouth open as he sang along to the gin blossoms follow you down. It was a beautiful day. The roof was down, the radio was blaring, and there wasn't a car in sight. Not even the one that we attempted to pass. I blinked a few times. I looked again to make sure that I was believing what I was seeing. Not wanting to hear my friend gloat about how awesome of a driver he is, I didn't ask him how he avoided the other car. He didn't even seem phased by it. I'm a skeptical man, but that incident was one of two things in my life that I simply cannot explain. In our 30s, when we happened to find ourselves in the same town one evening, we met up for beers, and between asking about our careers and our families, I brought up the incident. I said, do you remember that time that your dad gave us the Mazda to drive around and how we almost hit that car? He thought about it for a second, and I saw the blood drain from his face. Holy shit, he said. I do remember that. What happened? I told him I didn't know, but I had hoped that he would have filled in the blanks for me. 
I felt an ice-cold chill race up my spine. This past year, he brought his family to my town for a vacation. They came to my house for dinner and I wanted to tell our wives the story and have him tell his side of it all. This time, my friend seemed to have no recollection of it, as if his mind had completely erased the experience. Even when I reminded him of our previous conversations about it, he looked at me with a blank stare, as if he had never heard the story before. And so, the mystery of that near accident on the back roads of Mississippi remains unsolved, a strange and inexplicable memory that haunts me to this day. A mystery that seems to get stranger and stranger as the years go on. I have a young cat who's really smart and really naughty. She's allowed outside during the day, but she's also afraid of birds, <laughs> so she prefers it if me or my partner are outside with her. However, she really wants to be out at night, like very badly and she knows she's not allowed. She used to try to bolt if the door was open, even for a second, but we wised up to her and now she tries to be stealthy. It doesn't work on me because I've got her number, but my partner can be oblivious sometimes and she'll take the opportunity to slip out. I like to read, smoke, and drink on the back deck at night and there's a huge glass paneled door that she can jealously watch me through. Sometimes she stays by the door the entire time, especially when the moths are out, but sometimes she gets bored and goes to her spot on the couch. Well, one night, I'm out reading and drinking and I hear a soft thump on the deck. I look up and there she is, that little rat. I start scolding her for being out at night, assuming my partner accidentally let her out, and she ignores me doing her usual routine of standing up on her haunches and smelling this particular spot on the wall. It's an unusual posture and it looks really funny and distinct. As I'm still scolding her, she meanders under the table just out of my reach. I look under, but she seems to have disappeared into the shadows. I know she'll eventually want to come back in, so I don't pursue her. I mean, that just makes her stay out anyway. So I get up and I go in to refill my drink and to yell at my partner. And what do I see? She's in her spot on the couch, completely passed out asleep. I start yelling for my partner and she wakes up, slightly looking at me through drowsy eyes. I saw her outside less than two minutes ago and my partner said that they hadn't gone out at all recently. I started to wonder if there was a cat who just looked like her, but... She's so distinct, down to her extra hangy primordial pouch and silly little quirks, and clearly the cat outside knew me and was comfortable with me. We also don't have many strays around here because we border the wilderness and they can't survive. I know all of my neighbor's cats and they definitely don't look or act like mine. Here's the TLDR. I saw my cat outside, but when I went inside, she was sleeping on the couch. Was she astral projecting? Was I seeing into the future or the past? Or does my cat have a doppelganger? That's a duplicate. I've told this to my friend at least a dozen times because he wants to make sense of it and Ultimately, he urged me to post it here, so maybe someone can help me make sense of it. This truly shook me. I'm sorry for the long post, but he told me to give all the details that I had told him and the rules of the subreddit do as well. This happened on a road trip when I was 17, almost 18. It was me and my sister, a couple years older than me, and she was driving a super long, beaten road through the desert. About two hours on the road pass, and suddenly I noticed that the car that was behind us veered off on the road and came to a standstill. My sister audibly wonders what they're up to. A few dozen seconds later, there's this terrible series of bumps 
and cracks in the road that shake the car and knock the phone off of the seat, taking the aux cord out and halting the music. It lands close to me, so I pick it up and I start to reconnect the phone. When I do, we get this random, catchy ad about trash. The next thing of note happens just seconds after the ad ends. I stare off into the window and I see a truck parked ahead of us. As we pass it, I stupidly kept looking at it and the sheen it gave off, the glare from the sun, completely blinded me for a bit. When I closed my eyes, I still saw the outline of it. I was afraid that it was burned into my retinas when I finally opened my eyelids. It started to fade slowly and all I can remember seeing after that is the emergency airbag in the car pop into my face and sounds of metal on metal. My vision started going black and the image that's in my eyes from the truck fades completely. But when it fades, I open my eyes to see us still driving like nothing happened. That's when I noticed the car behind us. Same license plate as before, same car, same color, even the same driver as far as I could tell. The same things happened again. The road being bad and bumping the phone down, the aux disconnecting, and the same damn ad playing. All the while, I'm panicking in my head since my sister dismissed my questions like nothing out of the ordinary just happened. We come up to the truck again, and I stare. My eyes again have the after image of it. Just as before, I hear metal scraping and I feel the airbag pummel my face. As it fades, I'm scared to open my eyes again, but I hear my sister ask, what is that car doing? It forces my eyes open to see the same car for the third time, staring into the open desert before halting. I am in full-blown panic mode as I look ahead and see the crude road up ahead. I hold onto the phone for dear life and I manage to stop the phone from disconnecting, but we still get an ad when the next song plays. It's the same damn ad. As it nears its end, I stop myself from looking at the truck and instead I look ahead, noticing that the car in the opposite lane is swerving slightly. I piece it together in my head and caution my sister of the driver in the car. She has to swerve to avoid the car as it goes into the wrong side of the road, barely missing our car thanks to my sister's driving. The rest of the trip went without much of a hitch. My friend said that it may have been something like a quantum immortality or a swap between universes. I've always been interested in this stuff, but I have no clue how to explain my experience. Once more, I'm sorry for the long post. Here's the TLDR. Some sort of loop ends in a crash when I'm blinded. That happens twice, and the third time, I get to avoid a head-on collision. This happened some years back. To this day, it makes me wonder if there's more to reality than science actually knows. And I'm a big fan of science. I was taking a short vacation with my fiance and my parents. I had taken a job away from home and they met in the middle of our separation, the beach motel on the east coast. We had adjoining rooms and having just got there, the doors were open. Liz and I decided to get some ice, so we took two ice buckets and headed for the ice machine. The motel layout was linear. We were some distance out from a central hub area with vending machines and ice machines. Exactly 23 yards and some inches from turning the corner into the vending area, I heard my father say, Where's Jim and Liz? It was like he was speaking into my ear. I turned around, but he wasn't there. My mother said, just as close, they went to get ice. I looked at Liz, and she stopped when I did. I said, did you hear that? She just said, how? We went back and asked my parents what they had talked about without telling them what we'd heard. Eventually, Mom said, wait, remember? You asked where Jim and Liz went. 
The scientific skeptic in me kicked in and I inspected the spot where we'd heard them. No vents, no holes, nothing for sound to travel through. I measured the distance from the room using the admittedly imprecise method of counting strides. I arranged experiments where people in the motel room standing in various locations spoke sentences, often quite loudly, but no one standing where we heard them ever heard anything again. This isn't deep or significant, except I can't explain it at all. I worked at a car rental agency a couple of years ago. Part of the job was picking up customers at the auto body shop and bringing them to our office to put them in their new rental car. This particular day, I was supposed to pick up a guy at a shop that was only about a three minute drive from the office. The notes on his reservation said to pick him up at around 11.30, so I left the office at 11.25 and I headed over. When I pulled onto the lot of the shop, the door to the main office, which had the waiting room and the service counter, etc., was open. The garage bay doors were open, and there were cars in the garage in various states of repair and such, but no customer. In fact, there were no employees. There was no one at all. There were no customers in the waiting room. There was no one behind the counter. There was no one in the garage working on any cars, and there were even a couple of cars parked in the small lot, but no people. I walked around the entire perimeter of the building, and I waited for about ten minutes. No one showed up. So, I headed back to the office, and I told my boss that no one was there. Our phone rings about two minutes after that, and... Our phone rings about two minutes after I'm back at work. The customer says he's at the shop and is waiting for us to pick him up. I don't mention that I was already there. I just go back. When I get to the shop, there's a guy behind the counter. There's a couple of customers in the waiting room and about six guys in the garage all working on cars. And my customer, standing by his car, getting a few belongings out of it. Oddly enough... It was one of the cars that was already there the first time I went. I still have no idea what happened. It was like I was in an empty version of the property with no characters spawned in yet. 